Hello and welcome to Season 4, Episode 3 of Supercoach Swordplay. Great to have your company wherever you're watching, as Dwayne Russell says. I'm joined with DR. No Janif today. I wasn't here last week. Janif's presence isn't here today. Going to miss him. But we have a, a ton of questions to get into. Going to be a bit dodgy, me hosting this one, but we're due for that. So, yeah, just strap yourselves in. Should be a good podcast. Before we double in, DR, mate, how are you, brother? Spill's going very, very well, mate. Look, when your other two co-hosts are either gallivanting away overseas or having romantic getaways with their girlfriend, <laughs> someone's got to hold down the fort, mate. Someone's got to stay consistent on this podcast. So that man is me. Uh, but no, mate, in all seriousness, going very well. I'm on school holidays at the moment, so enjoying a little bit of a break, which is nice. But in saying that, I do have three sons at home, which, uh, as you know, mate, you've been down here for a few weekends and and stay for a while. You know what the, the chaos and the Madness. carnage can be like, mate. So oh, mate. Uh, almost looking forward to going back to work for a little bit of break, to be honest, Spilsy. But uh, nah, going really well, mate. I actually have a little message from our other brother, Janet, before I get into my round review for the week, mate. As you oh, know, yeah. he's in Europe at the moment. Now, says it's very, very cold. I'm just reading off a message, a DM that he sent me here. Very cold, but going very, very well at the same time. So his round three review scored a 1960 ranked top five percent for the round and 9.2 k overall captain bont after the vc butters failed i think there was a few people i was in the same boat as janeth as well born in luke ryan tom powell and carol for young martin and burgess and he actually got to watch martin pick it up on the airplane here and apparently wanted to jump off. Just wanted to jump off that aeroplane. Things were not looking good after you traded out <laughs> Nick Martin. But I think in the long run, it'll still be okay. Very quickly, his plan trades for this week are Wines, Billings, and Lazaro. So using a boost is our brother here, mate. Or mm. Harley Reid and Lazaro to two yep. Flanders. So jumping on a couple of the Suns boys and Darcy. And it will only be his second boost used. And at the moment, his VC is Butters into Mr. Isaac Heaney. So that's how Janet Thrown's looking and his plans for the week, mate. Now, he does have me in the overall ranks. Personally, I scored a 1937 6099 for an overall score. Just one more, mate, 6100. But hopefully I'll make it back next week. 11385 for a season rank. So I'm not complaining after a pretty poor start last year, mate. And I also had... As I just mentioned, the VC butters into Captain Bond. Not too many of those really big ceiling scores apart from Max Gorn, who uh, I think someone else may have even had him as a cheeky VC. We might hear about that in a little while, mate. But all in all, going all right, mate. But things could be better. I'm missing out in a few of those money makers like your Carols, Dempies and, and Sharps. But hopefully oh, I can get it. in. A nice rookie this week, mate. You know all about it, don't you? Because you're in a bit of the same position. But, uh, yeah, that's my quick round of view along with Janet's, mate. Tell us how you're travelling, mate, because as I alluded to before, I think you managed to snag a pretty nice VC, VC score for the week, brother. Yeah, well, look, firstly, I did catch last week's episode and far out was I thrown under the bus. Jeez, I wasn't expecting it at all. I was just watching, thinking, like, you're like, asking for a that particular photo of me, I didn't really think anything of it. I'm like, oh, yeah, they're just going to have a bit of a chat about it and a bit of banter of it. Oh, about the priorities and all that. I was like, oh, no, I've let the boys down and a few cheeky roasts, a few cheeky sledges in the comments. Yeah, I was a bit flat with that. And I'm like, oh, can't miss another episode now. <laughs> and then Janif's gone off on his way. So, look, practice what well, you preach, brother. But at least you're in the are, country. You've stayed in the country for us at, at least, least mate, unlike, unlike Janeth, mate, who's the other side of the world at the moment. So that, that's that's a tick for you, mate. Yeah, well, you, you did have it teed up. Kudos to him. But, DR, mate, that's the beauty of having three guys in the car because someone leaves for, for one week, the ship doesn't sink. You know, it, can, it continues Absolutely. to sail on and then the other two can hold the fort. So, look, mate, we'll... We'll do our best today and um, we'll, we'll whip through these questions and um, and, and do it. Yeah, just absolutely smash it. That's what we're here for. So, look, mate, I, I did have a pretty good week, if I'm being honest. Um, way, way better than, than I ever would have thought. I scored 20, 25. Obviously, that's a really good score considering we've got best 18. So, you know, anything in the 2000s is a, is a big success. And I'm now sitting at 5.7K and... 
I went up over on nearly 25k in the ranks. So yeah, that was huge off the back of yeah, it was uh, a um a very fair and reasonable VC from Max Gorn. I did say not on the podcast because I was absent for that one, but I did leave a message saying that I was going for that high ceiling because of the the easy Max Gorn fallback and. That's where I got off, mate. The easy fallback because, yeah. Um, I bet you got off on it, mate. I bet you got off. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, honestly, I, I, I thought Bonham Pally was going to smash the Eagles. And I, I thought, I'm just going for this high ceiling because he's bon, Bonham Pally is someone that you just want to fall back on and and you can back him in. But the odd occasion that he, you probably expect a little bit more considering the, the opposition. And what do you kick, DR? Three, three or four goals or something. He was. More, yeah. I think it had a bit of an impact on the scoreboard. So that's a really good effort. But you got to ask yourself, what else was he doing? Because 110 for four goal performance from midfield. So yeah, I I don't know. I didn't look a, a lot of that game. I just kept checking the scores because all I cared about was was Libba. Um, I'll have my opinion on that later on. But yeah, I, I was a bit flat with the result, and yeah, very surprised that Bonham Pally only only did 110, but. Other than that, mate, yeah, the team went really well. We bought in Ryan, who scored exactly the same as Young, but I'm not too flat about it because I think Ryan's a top two or three defender where Young, yeah, he had a great game. The role was there, but I think he's still going to battle his inconsistency issues. So I, I don't regret that at all. I, I think it was the right move. And Nick Martin as well, someone else I did trade out, but he scored, do the, I'll say do the maths, uh, work it out here. So he had 44 disposals and I don't want to say only, but he only scored 136. So oh, I feel like that was a bit overs for him in terms of touches. No one expects 44 every week, but if you get 44 touches, I'm expecting a 150 at least. So hundred percent, hundred percent. I don't know. Oh, I, I, yeah, he had a great game. 130 is a really good score, but I do worry about, What's he gonna What's he gonna score when he gets twenty seven or thirty touches, which is really good. We're seeing it with Dacos as well, still getting a lot of the pill, but only scoring. Well, he had one twelve on the weekend. So, is Nick Martin scoring sustainable? He had a, a lot, a lot of the footy, but not. Uh, I didn't. I checked the super coach up, and I genuinely thought I was gonna. I'll see one fifty, one sixty, and one thirty six. And he was just his disposal was actually really good. Barely missed a target. So. Very surprised there, DR. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking things there, but I thought it was a bit hard done by. Oh, well, of course he was going to come out and smash it. As soon as everyone's traded yeah. this bloke out, that's the way it Murphy's goes. Law, it? Eh? Same as Hayden Young. Remember Fisher? The first week you traded out Fisher, comes out next week and, and scores a ton. It's and just, then shut the bed. Yeah, exactly, mate. So I'm hoping that Nick Martin does the same thing as a bloke that starred him and traded him out pretty quickly because if this – Guy coat goes on to be a genuine defensive keeper. Oh, it's going to hurt so much, man. I tell you, it's going to going to really, really hurt. You can't you can't get them all. And look, I, I'm not too flat about that either because it, it did get me Ryan and it did get me Powell as well, who was 312k. So something had to give, and I think I made the right right call because Powell possibly worst case scenario. I think he can actually be an F7, like someone. Or we can do a quick little cash swap. Ryan definitely like top six in his role. As I said, top top two or three. So look, I don't regret yep. the trades. Uh, it, it did hurt this week, but in the long run, mate, I think it's definitely going to pay off. Now, usually, usually I'll throw to you and say, look, we're going to do a DR's round. That's what a lot of people click on the video, but have a spell, mate. Have the week off, I say. Sitting on the this week, am I, mate? Doing a Charlie yeah. Constable. Have a chop out, mate. I'm gonna, yeah, sub sub you out. Sub you out for this one. Speaking of sub outs, I'm I'm taking over the rant this week because I've absolutely had a gut full and I just I've had it bottled up and I did do a round review DR today and I was very very conservative with it. I barely said anything. I, I discussed it, but I didn't go into it. I didn't go on any tangent because I wanted to save it for the sore play. I did a quick review on my Twitter of how I went. Stay tuned for the sore play because I'm absolutely going to give it to this bloke. And my rant is going to be all on to Luke Beveridge. So, Bevo. mate, this guy stitched me up. This guy stitched me up. So, I'm I'm spending hours and hours on my preseason team trying to pick a, a really nice set of blokes that are going to set me up for the year. and 
Pods in particular, Tom Libertore is someone that I really, really did like. And to me, there was nothing to suggest that he shouldn't be as good as what he was last year. I know it was an age thing, but, mate, he's aging like five and one. I just I just honestly think without yeah, without that 20 in his system when he got concussed, he's averaging 120 easily. So yeah, I was pretty happy with the pod. Scored 95 week one. That's all right. It is what it is. Backed it up for one, I want to say 115. I think it was 120 last week, got scaled down, which is a bit unfortunate, but really bounced back. And then on Sunday, D, uh, he was on 95, I reckon it was, at three-quarter time. And I'm I'm sitting back thinking, finally, I waited patiently, and uh, he's he's going to have a really good game. I reckon he's going to score 130, 140. I wasn't watching the game. I was out at the, um, I don't know what it was, like a, a parade thing in town, Easter parade. With the misses, really good day. But as a result, I was away from the footy, away from the action, so I didn't know what happened. And I checked the, I checked the game results at the end of it, and I saw that he was on 98. So look, glass half full, dr. He didn't lose points when he did get subbed out. I'll take True. that. But he and he could have got subbed out a lot earlier. I mean, they could have subbed him out half time. So I am grateful for that one, but I'm absolutely livid on it because the guy that I stuck fat with, the pod that I backed in. Not him has let me down, but he he's coaching. So yeah, what, what's Luke Beveridge doing? I mean, he has to get the sack this year, surely. I really, if you're a dog supporter, I'm sorry, but I really hope you don't make finals this year because I don't want Beveridge to be in the helm in 2025. It's an absolute piss take. So look, just when you thought him subbing out, um, what's his face, rookie Riley Sanders. Out. Yeah, he subbed out Sanders on debut, which was criminal. Could, you, you think it couldn't get any worse. He subs out Liver, who's their a grade inside mid, just on the nut, clearances galore, which is absolutely like stiff as. People rant, yeah, he's a premiership coach. They got lucky that year. It was a fairy tale year, but they finished seventh on the ladder in 2016. They have never had a top four finish under Luke Beveridge. 2021, they made the grand wow. final off. I thought they were better than Melbourne that year in 2021, but they choked against Port Adelaide in the last round, came fifth, and had to like scamper their way into the grand final with gassed and then, yeah, got cooked against the D. So, and he hasn't backed it up since. He's sour in his press conferences True. and he's sour to our supercoach sides. So that's, that's pretty relevant to our coaching. But Bevo, give us a spell, jog on. Give it, give another guy a crack because he's a bloody shit coach, and the Bulldogs deserve a lot better. Look, I can't be too, can't be too hell bent on that one because Brad Scott's our coach at the moment, and look, yeah, a bit, a bit sort of sus on the lingo he's been throwing at the club. I feel like we're a, we're a sort of, yeah, all bark no bite. We're just throwing out all these slangs that we're gonna be, we're gonna bring it. And I don't know what what he was saying. I can't remember now. It was like something like um, we're gonna play with the edge or some shit like that. Win a final first, yeah. boys. Far out. But <laughs> Luke, Luke Beveridge absolutely killed me, absolutely broke my heart. And um, unfortunately, DR, I'm going to use a boost this week so I can get Tom Libertore out of my team and bring in, Ouch. I think, Zach Butters. It really it really breaks my heart because I bloody love him. He was on the – just and also to rub salt in the wounds, I'm still ranting. Jeez, if your rants didn't go along there, this one's bloody – I've got, I've got you trumped here, mate. But he was on the front bar – on Thursday night last week, and mate, he's the funniest bloke ever. He's just such a cruiser. He's kind of he's kind of like what I reckon I'd be if I was an AFL player. Just no, just no fucks given at all. Just kicking back, like just happy for a <laughs> chat. And yeah, he doesn't doesn't sugarcoat anything. So I love Liver as a player, and um, yeah, it's a shame to see him out of my team. Enough said, Dr. Sack Beverage. I'm sick of him. Get rid of Bevo, you say. But I tell you what, and you've got a nice I need a drink. Pat there as well, mate, that would um, sort of match up with, with Libba's style there. Just the old random spaceship to go along with maybe the Snickers bar <laughs> type thing. So I you always haven't that seen that, probably. by the way. So that's a, yeah, I'm going to have to reveal that one day. Oh, without a doubt, mate. We we, we need to get this. Oh, this it was on that photo last week, wasn't it? it might have oh, been on that photo. It would have been too with the maybe. nice angle there, mate. Maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe. We'll have to we'll have to maybe get a close up on that because it, it, it has a bit of Libba style to it, yeah, in my definitely. opinion, mate. But but on Libba, you're right. If there was one bloke that you just love to play with and know what he'd just bring every week, wouldn't it be Libba? Imagine it's like a first year draft D, just mm. just waltzing out with that bloke. You'd think, geez, he, he's got my back. I'm going to be pretty safe this week with uh, with Libba by my side. But you're right, mate. Bevo. 
damn, Ponson. How would you sub him out? I mean, surely there's players that are underperforming, and it wasn't an injury sub; it was a tactical sub. That's what. Apparently, gets me. right? Apparently, uh, someone sent me a message. Uh, I think it might have been Mrs. Beveridge, to be quite honest. But they said, <laughs> "Look, we, he's got an excuse for for Bond because he had the sore ankle, so just managing his minutes up forward." Uh, playing against the Eagles and with with Libba, he was a little bit sore as well. So the game was iced. Just decided just to do the right thing by Libba. Obviously not by super coaches. And uh, they, she said with Riley Sanders, he was just a young man, just wanted to give him a little bit of a taste and then just watch uh, the rest from the bench. Uh, so Mrs. Beveridge, absolutely telling Porky's in my opinion there. Spills, fine, but, uh, fine apparently, he is a that's what coach. It, she is. She is because you know that he doesn't have the best relationship, does he, with media? And I'm not saying we're, we're big media here, but uh, did did put in the phone call to the Beveridge household, and that's a response that I got from Mrs. Beveridge herself, mate. So believe it, if you will or if you won't. Either way, sack Bevo, I'm with you, mate. Sack him. And how about, how about, how about this one, DR? Buddy, Tom Morris has stolen Chomper's seat at Channel 9, so you've got to ask yourself, oh. who won that press conference back in round one, 2022? Wow, the, I, I, look, I love Chompers, mate. The old Chompy <laughs> Chomp Chomp, Tommy Sheridan. You, you, you actually introduced me to that clip as well. Uh, we'll have to, I'll have to link it oh. down to one of these because that is an absolute classic. But uh, oh. yeah, I just, I just love how Chompers just cops it. I, I don't mind the Sunday Footy Show. There's some uh, pretty elite band to there, so don't, don't mind watching the boys there. No, it's not too bad. All right, we'll, we'll move on now. We're going to do a bit of a different style podcast. So yeah, quick. A quick saw review, longer saw rant, but without Jonathan, we, we've had a bit of a, a sticky situation with DR's internet. It's actually nine o'clock, nine thirty at the moment, so we've left it a little <laughs> bit late. So to save us staying up until one or two o'clock in the morning, like you guys would have done last week, great effort by the way. That was unbelievable. Sort Thank of thankful I didn't come on in the end because we. <laughs> Which just you, oh, you two, shit. it went on for ages. Imagine me on there as well with an, a, a third <laughs> opinion. Bloody, would have gone for four hours easily. Chaos, so, yeah. Mate, kudos to you boys. But as a result, I think the idea would be to keep this one a bit short. Shorter turnaround as well. We've got, what, it's Tuesday night now. And yeah, we've got lockout in two days, less than two days. So yeah, we're going to, what we're going to do is skip every sort of segment. We're still a little bit of a round review. Between, between each other and, yeah, quick rant. And then we're going to fire up or fire away straight into these Q&A questions. So I don't know what you want to do here, DR, whether you want to get the questions up and, and I'll read them. Let's but do it. Let's we'll get do stuck it. straight into it. Now, we'll try and smash through them. I think a lot of them will be somewhat repetitive. So we'll start from the top and just work our way down and have a look at this, DR. So Janeth, he's just... He's just done a little bit of a drive-by on the way out. He has given us some homework. This is by far the biggest question in this Q&A, and it's definitely Janov. So, oh, stitch us Here up. Oh, well, it is All what right, it is. Mate. All right. Hey, hey legends. legends. Do you Here want me to read it? Or... You take it away, Spilsy. I'll give it a crack anyway. I'm not the best read. I'm not a school teacher like you, DR. So the pressure's only on. Only teacher now, mate. That's all good. Oh, you, just, you, <laughs> still, you still got to you still got to read. Oh, so yeah, there's no no pressure on me whatsoever. But and I'll, I'll get stuck into it. Hey, legends, came for this episode. Would you cut James Jordan early ahead of his buy if it meant get getting a 650 plus k mid instead? Took would be so Jordan winds Billings to Green, Sarong, Merritt, Flanders, Darcy, or Reed, Lazaro, Wines, Billings, Took, Darcy. Um, I personally lean on option two as Took have North Melbourne, West Coast, and Essen twice. So it's a really good run. I don't mind it. But, Jana, remember what Took did to me last year. I, I captained him against North, and he scored a 40. So I don't always you know, take that with a grain of salt, if you will. But this is a tricky one, DR. I probably like... Option two, it's hard to argue with Janeth with any sort of super coach question. But the only thing is, I don't know about getting rid of Lazaro because I've got Lazaro and he's, he's I think he's still got a, ne- a negative break even. So, and he's just starting to find some good form, just come off for 64, which is pretty handy, seeing how dry some of the rookies are. But, DR, mm. what do you reckon on this question? I might throw this one to you and see what your take is, man. Yeah, well, I think with the second option, you don't have to get rid of Lazaro. He's got Reed slash Lazaro. So are you saying that you'd rather trade out Reed, Wines, and Billings rather than Lazaro, Wines, and Billings? Is that who you're keeping at the moment, mate? Laz over, over Reed? 
I don't know what his cash gen's looking like, but that might be the case. I think Wines and Billings definitely have to go. Like Wines is injured, Billings is oh, he's just you just got to accept defeat there. And I think oh, it's tough. I think Flanders oh, is a must-have if you don't have him because yeah. he's the obvious. Flanders I and Darcy, actually like, you should bring I like him. number two, mate. I like number two just simply because I don't like trading out Jordan this week because he's got the West Coast matchup. Now, just because he's playing West Coast, he's not guaranteed to smash it out of the park. But let's be honest, if you want any matchup, it's either – no disrespect them, probably north or west coast, isn't it? So yeah, I would go Looking with good. Option, mate, because I want to keep on to Jordan this week. Then I think you can probably just flip him at the buy if you're looking to do some quick upgrades. So I think that yep. Took and Flanders in are, are really good ins. Look, Tooks, along with Jack Steele, to me, they're both looking like they're getting back to those best years. Remember when they both got that when 20 plus season average? So I really like Took as a selection. Flanders, he's gotten both combos anyway which I think is going to be really solid. I'd actually have him as probably a must-have forward yeah. this year, given the fact that Darcy's coming back. This is Shrek Darcy. Uh, and Dogger may have some question marks soon. Heaney's great, but Flanders is the man you want to get in. So for me, mate, I am going option two. But the funny thing is, usually we'd go to Janeth for these sort of questions, wouldn't we? What do you reckon, Janeth? But he's yeah, the would he answer answer your own question far out. Like Usually, yeah, own, usually I have my take, and then Janeth goes... All right, Spills, I'd like to play devil's advocate. And I'll be like, fire out. <laughs> Don't listen to what I have to say then. But, Janet, mate, look, back your gut, man. Like, yeah, you're, you're buddy, an unreal super coach. So, look, whatever feels right, I would do. But, yeah, option two for me, particularly because I think Flanders is just such a lock. So, yeah, I'd, yeah, you won't look back. And he's so cheap, mate. Averaging 118 and he's not even 600K. So, not even, not even close. So, yeah, definitely, definitely rate that one mate um awesome mate the next, next one spills we have is h take it away buddy g'day dr and spills let's always zoom in um now now if the wines injury would you trade spud billings for darcy and wines to power or go up instead and go wines to flanders last alternative use a boost and go five to power or flanders to get both in this week oh, i would definitely go flanders man 100%. Like, this is the week to get him. He has not gone below the ton since round zero. We saw we saw enough against Richmond. Hasn't stepped a foot wrong. He's still on the 500k mark. And before you know it, he'll be gone. So that's a real quick one for me. Wines has to go. And look, Powell's a really good pickup as well. That's that's a, that's a really tough one. But he's already nearly 400k. He went up, I think he was 312. Now he's 375. So... Yeah, he would be one. I think Powell last week, absolute lock, must have. But I think he, Dr. I think he's made too much money. I don't think he's worth the trade now. Is that a hot take? But no, look, I don't, I don't really think so, mate. I think maybe my, my advice uh, for people looking to bring in Powell is that you, you've got to trust your gut a little bit here with how you feel his prospects are going to be for the rest of the season. So if you genuinely think that he could be F six and a keeper for the rest of the year. I still think it's okay to get on. But if you're treating him more as just a bit of a moneymaker, then I think it is too late because you've missed out on that big early rise. I mm. sort of agree with you, Spills. Flanders is pretty much a guaranteed keeper. We don't like to make guarantees in this game, particularly so early in the season. Oh, uh, but he is. Let's, He's let's F1, honest, mate. for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, F2, he, Heaney, mate. But... Well, Heaney, we've got, we've got the, big, we, the big Isaac there, but surely... He sits after Isaac. We've got Dogger there at the moment, but with Shrek coming in, we don't know his prospects are going to be long-term. But if you are looking long-term, Flanders is the ultimate get. He's only had the one price rise. He had the buy last week, remember. Looking good, mate. So I think it's he's going to be a long-term keeper. Just yeah, got I'm with you there. It hurts, doesn't it, though, not getting Powell. But the week was probably last week in my opinion anyway, H. But uh, shout out to your legend. I'm sure that we'll probably chat tomorrow night anyway, buddy. All right, All right Super, Gilsey. We got, sorry, Dow. Um, we got Supercoach Lock. Now, DR might actually need some assistance with this one because I don't know how you say that. Um, LaFau, oh, man. LaFau. But I couldn't um, tell you who this bloke is if I bloody tripped over him on the street. But we'll get into it anyway. So, <laughs> hey, guys, thoughts on, let's just say LaFau. With Tom Lynch and Noel Bolter out injured. Now, I don't know a thing or two about him. So this might be a bit of super coach ignorance. I do apologize. I'm not a Tigers man. Um, but 
I'd recommend maybe this is a bit of a left field one, but I don't know, maybe DMNO or something like that. Um, there's a couple of Richmond blokes on Twitter that would definitely be able to help. Um, what do you reckon, Dale? Because I don't know. I don't know anything about this this bloke. Maybe he's a rookie that got picked up. Um, yeah, look, I'll, mate. It's... I'll try to look him up. Hang on. Well, what I, what I can tell you about him is he's obviously on the bubble this week. And I've got here in my notes, I'm just going to call him the Richmond guy to avoid embarrass, embarrassment because I will absolutely butcher his oh. name. But I think he did pretty well there, Spielsy, actually giving it a crack. So so kudos to you, mate. But did kick his first snag on the weekend. Pretty exciting. The Kiwi guy. There. Yes, yes. So really, yeah, really. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a, a project type player, I think. But yep. 26 and a 39, that'd be any two scores. Obviously, bargain basement price. Now, we know that. With his job security, it's actually looking okay at the moment because Richmond have those uh, injuries to their tools. So we know Tommy Lynch is going to be out for a little while. So uh, does even like a Naismith come into the frame? That There's a slight possibility there. But look, oh. for me, mate, there's just – Give him another enough. week. Even if he has a price rise, you're probably going to – you might pay 130K or something. I mean – because he's, See, he's got a buy coming up as well. So he's got a buy coming up. I just that don't too. think that his, his scores – are going to do much for you. The only reason why you get him, mate, is if you really needed to get a certain amount of coin in the bank and if you needed an extra 20K, for example, to make a really big move. That's the only reason why I'd go there because I just don't think he offers enough scoring-wise. Look, job security should be right in the short term, but you know mm. what, are, what are 20s and 30s going to do for us really, mate, apart from just be a really frustrating slow burn and just take up a, a rookie bench spot when – uh, he's there. We may miss out on another bloke, another really nice player because he simply hasn't made enough money and we think maybe it's not worth using a trade to trade him out this early. So I, I'll just stay away from him, uh, Locke. That's my opinion anyway, man. Um, you pretty bring Sam that. Darcy Ooh. instead, I mean. Oh, 100%. Like, 100%. You, you just can't go past a negative almost, almost 100. It's like negative 80 or 90 break even. So that's Look, it, I'd let that one go through the keeper personally. Um, all right, next one, Camo. Nice regular channel. How are you, legend? Legend. We'd love yep. to know if you guys think Steele will be a top eight midfielder this year. And if so, is he a must have from now? Um, best defense, best defender forward rookie to bring in Hall or Jordan Fife. Love your work as always, gents. We'll start off by saying maybe a hot take, but yeah, I think Steele can be a top eight, two, ten midfielder. And mate, I'd love to bring him in. If I, if Libba wasn't sort of getting subbed and I didn't really look, I'd be looking to get butters in cause he's that, I feel like he's a must have. I've got some, I've got problems of my own, but if I didn't have those problems, Jack Steele, I'd be all over him. Now I am, I think I'm about 5k too short to go like Jordan down. And then I can't remember what the other one was, um, Barry down or rookie. And then up to, cause I got some cash in the bank. I'm just short to get, um, steel. So I have tried that, but mate, I love him. I love steel as a pick. He, three scores in a row over 120. Just yeah, as honest as the day is long, mate. He's just been so consistent. So yeah, you can't go wrong with that one. Um, and best defender forward rookie to bring in for Hall, Jordan, or Fife. Obviously, it has to be Darcy, as we discussed. They are surely. I mean, he's the only one on the on the bubble. And then there is Draper as well. I really like his game. I think he's going to be a really nice rookie. I think he's averaging about. Almost 60 flat for the Dockers. He's just a defender, rookie, one, 123K rookie. I, I, I'm pretty sure he is. So he looks really good, real X factor. But I'll throw it to you, Dow. What do you reckon? Do you want to elaborate on on this on this question? Yeah. Look, mate, for that, you know, best defender or forward rookie, you, you know the two there, mate. There's also Tom Brown from Richmond as well, who you mm. may want to have a look at. I think he's around 150K. So you are paying yeah, up a, bit more, a bit little more. bit more there. But another option, you probably got those three major options for the week. And back to Jack Steele. Yeah, I'm with you, mate. I think that he looks back to his best. He really That's does. Yeah. I think last year he may have lost a little bit too much weight. And I think he's built up a little bit more strength this year and got a better balance between having that running ability and still having that contested ability to really lay those tackles and stick those tackles. And that's the best thing about it, mate, tackling really, really well. And he's actually upping yep. his disposal count and actually finding a fair bit of the footy as well. Uh, last year, that 
let him down a little bit. It just didn't look like he was getting enough of the ball. So the fact that he's finding the pill with a lot more ease this year, looking really strong again, and he's by far, by far the number one man there in the Saints midfield. He's a captain of the club. He's a proud man. He wants a flag. He wants a premiership. So I think that all the signs are just really positive for Jack Steele at the moment. And we've seen him do it before, really mix it with the big boys. I think that 2024 yep. could be the year where he really comes back to his best, mate. Really tough not having him in the side. I really want to get him in last week. I want to get him in this week again if I could. It's but tough. it just seems like things There's always happen. something else going wrong. Yeah, isn't there? He just gets If there back. wasn't, I mean, perfect. Like, 100%. I mean, and this is a really good segue into this next question, DR. So, Engo, hope you're doing well, brother. Hey, legends, enjoy enjoying the potty week in, week out. Thanks, man. Really appreciate yeah, the feedback. We're getting a lot of positive feedback on the podcast, and, yeah, it's just been a really good start to the year. So, yeah, appreciate everyone that tunes in. So, Wines to Took or Steel. Now, I'm going to – straight off the bat, DR, just I'm going to – I know Tuke's had a really red hot start, but he burnt me to a crisp last year. So maybe recency bias. And then <laughs> just, we couldn't talk any higher of Steele at the moment. So I have to say Jack Steele. And a lot of people would play devil's advocate with me on that one because Steele did burn a few last year, George in particular. So it's a tricky one, but oh, I do like Steele just that little bit better. But far out, Tuke has started well. Those Gold Coast midfielders, far out, they are. Um, they're on fire, but I think Steele is the number one mid at St. Kilda. It, it, it really does show. There's a massive drop-off between he and the next best. I went to the game on the weekend. Go Don's got the win. Loves it. But he was he was just the number one CBA holder. Just looked good. Basically won all of St. Kilda's clearances when they got him. So where Tuuk Mill, he's playing, he's playing that sort of second or third fiddle with Anderson and Rao, who are really looking good, particularly Rao. So I would have to say steel, but I reckon, yeah, I reckon about 65% steel and then 45% two, just to put it like that. But what about yourself, Dia? Who would you pick out of these two? I pretty much echo your thoughts. I think steel, you said it mm. pretty much perfectly there. The difference to me is still is by far the number one mid at the Saints. Two may not be at the Suns. Now, we know that they run a pretty tight midfield rotation there, so I don't think that's a you know something to, to worry about too much. We know what his role is, too, and it's going to be a friendly role. But if we're splitting hairs, steals at a cheaper price, I think it's around the 20K mark, so you're saving a little bit of money there. That may allow you to make another move elsewhere. What I'd really be looking to do, and I won't do it right now because we need to, to get through these questions pretty quickly, but maybe check out their fixture, maybe their short-term fixture, mm. look at their upcoming opponents. I don't have it uh, at the top of hand at the moment, but yeah, make sure that you do that. These are the little things that we need to look at. Tuke's obviously coming off his buy now, so um, they're both equal in regards to having one buy each for the remainder of the yeah. season. Maybe check out when they've got their buy. I don't know off the top of my head, but that may sway you in a certain direction looking at your other premiums in your current side, but you're really splitting hairs with this. And you can't go wrong with either, I don't think. That's what I was going to say. Either way, you can't go wrong, mate. So, yeah, I think we're both just Jack Steele there. But, look, the trademark, mate, he's one of my favourite plays in the comp, the best two-way runner, the hardest mm. worker, and one of the best captains. So it's a funny one, way, isn't it? It's, it's DR's lover boy versus George's lover boy. So this is just a <laughs> genuine head-to-head -head question. Maybe you should have got George on the podcast just for this question. We do, we do need to definitely get George on as a guest, mate, during the year. But, uh, wow. yeah, I, I think we're, we're both just going the man of steel there, mate. But it's a really good question, Engo, and right uh, question. very hard to split, brother. Very hard to split. CR7, would you go Harley Reid to Took or Fife to Tom Green? Now, I wouldn't trade Reid with 22 break even, even though he does have Sydney. I, I think he's just got more to give. I, I feel like he's not quite ready to be traded out, traded out yet. He hasn't quite done his job where Fife, he's sort of, I'm not an owner DR, so I can't really elaborate too much, but I know he didn't, I think it was a 69, I reckon I saw him score. Two 69s in a row, mate. Yeah, yes, that's a bit ordinary. And yep. bloody piddles, mate, Tom Green. Now I own Tom Green. I VC'd him round one. Haven't looked back. My VCs have just been off the chart. Won't go into that. Yeah, but you've killed it, haven't you? This, yeah. This, yeah, I got... Well, Tom Green VC and then Sarong VC, Gorn VC. I haven't had a VC under 145, so it's been yeah. a bloody red-hot start. This time last year, I couldn't nail a VC over 
120. But back on the question, DR, I'm getting a, getting a bit of bit off getting topic. Excited here. These bills. Getting we excited need here, buddy. Bills, bills, buddy. Get track. You got you off your head. Now look, <laughs> this is an easy question for me. I one hundred percent Tom Green. Five to Tom Green. If you can get that done, I would do that. Just had his buy is expensive, but man, he's only getting more dear because yeah, he's gonna keep pumping out scores. I know who do the Giants have this week, DR? I can't remember. I think they've actually got the Suns. I reckon they yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think it's just gonna be a, a, a bloody clearance based bull midfield matchup. I think he and Rao are just gonna be really out there in the tackle count. I still think he's gonna score well. I'd bring in Tom Green. What do you reckon, DR? 100 percent mate. I'm gonna keep this one really, really short. My answer for CR7. I think that Tom Green is a must-have midfielder this year, mate. I can him as an absolute must-have. He is a beast. His ceiling yep. game absolutely through the roof. They're skyscraper type stuff. So although we just talked about the fact that we really do love Tuke as a pick, I don't think that you compare Tuke to Green. I think that Green is absolute elite Uber tier one, and Tuke's probably that that tier below for me anyway mate but uh two good options but you can't go past a green ball mate it's really tough not having him in your side so jump on him i reckon Ingo. but good question brother thanks for that man 100 man all right placey who are regular placey, legend how are you placey hey boys is it is it worth moving on a liver to get merit ryan type I've lost patience with Bevo. I'm not sure <laughs> if liver is the top eight mid I know you're keen on the move spills I did touch on it uh, place here. Yeah, absolutely. I'm keen on it. I, I, I don't trust Bevo. I don't think Libo is a top 15 midfielder just off the back of that. I think there's a fair chance that he does get managed a bit more, particularly when they're up. I saw red flags. You don't sub out your best players. That's just a simple fact. And I think Isaac has butters. I'm pretty sure he does. So Merritt, Merritt Ryan type. Oh, DR, I'm going to say Ryan for this one. Now, strictly because Merritt does have Port Adelaide, and oh, as a Bombers man, we get smashed every time we play Port in Adelaide all the time. It's always a bloodbath, and Merritt's still got a – I think he's got a break air 115, something like that, so he might make a little bit of money, but I don't I, – I think there's a fair chance he doesn't hit it. I don't think the average is too sustainable. Very rarely does a player average 130 all season unless you're bloody you know, prime Gary Ablett or prime Max Gorn Grundy, et cetera. So I think – Merritt's probably due for a pretty ordinary one. And and Ryan, I think this is the last week to get him before that ship has sailed because I think he'll be 680K before you know it. And it's so conclusive that Freo are going to use him as that number one key defender. Not key defender, but that just distributor fullback. He gets every kick out. I mean, yeah. but then keep in mind, plan for Merritt because you're going to want him in about two or three weeks give or take, because he's got a piss take of a run coming up. So well, he's got Richmond, West Coast, North. It's all happening. Uh, Collingwood scores really good against them as well. So, look, I won't ramble on too much more, Placey, but I'm going to say Ryan just for this week because of the break evens and the matchup. But I could well and truly be proven wrong. Um, but you got a plan for Merritt. I totally agree, mate. So I think when you want Merritt in is probably round seven. As you mentioned, mate, Collingwood, West Coast, GWS, North, and Richmond, that's pretty nice. And a couple of weeks after that, they play West Coast again. So mm. he's a man that you do want for that run. And we've seen what his ceiling's like. I've owned him for the last couple of years, mate. It's all about the timing with Zeret. If you get your timing right with this pick, he could potentially be one of your best trading options for the year. So I'm probably with you, mate. If you're looking to go now, I'm probably going Lukey Ryan. You, you could go early on Merritt. I think that's fine. But I, probably... I couldn't buy him anyone for doing so. I mean, no, and we always say you can get him in cheaper, but I don't think we will. I mean, I think he's going to hover around like mid 600Ks this year. He just looks so good. It's not just like the matchup good. either, DR. Like, it's the venue. Saki boy, he loves Marvel, but he also loves the G. I mean, Dreamtime at the G scored 160. Anzac Day, he always goes off. So those big games at the G, he thrives off them. So, yeah, keep yeah. him in mind, yeah. but... Definitely would say, Ryan. Um, CR7, again, um, how many keepers is the right amount at this stage of the season? I currently have 12, counting Powell, um, not counting Grundy. Obviously, he wants, probably wants to trade to English. How, I don't know. I've made one upgrade now because I got – oh, what I do? I got Jordan up to Flanders, so I'm counting that as an upgrade. I think I've got 13. 
12, Look, this, 13. This is a question, mate, where it's it's really team dependent as well. Like how many mid prices okay. do you have? So if you've gone real mid price heavy, then you probably won't currently have as many keepers as those people that have gone your pure guns and rookies approach. So I think it really depends on how you've structured your side, what price ranges have you really focused on. Um, as look, I suppose a general rule, what, 10 to 12, depending on your your structures at the moment, 13, 14, yeah. absolutely laughing, I think, at this stage. But it's a really hard question to answer, mate. And the other, the other thing is that Spills might count someone as a keeper, and I may say, no, nah, well, I don't really view that particular player as a keeper. Powell's a great example that you've already brought up, mate. So um, mm. there's even been a conversation, is Dogger a keeper? Well, at the moment he is, but if Darcy comes back, things don't look good, then then maybe he's not. So I think there's this, this is very, very team dependent. But as a general rule, I'd say let's just go between 9 and 13, I reckon. Uh, well, I haven't any... actually started upgrade season, so it's probably it's basically the same as what you start out with because like, Dogger's just a sideways trade because you want to cash true, in for a yeah, true, anyway, true, so yeah. You probably count him, but I guess that sort of makes sense. Uh, the Bishop, how are you, man? Hey, fellas, I'd like to know if it would be worth worth it to trade LDU. Oh, LDU, far out. That's that's not going well this year, has it? <laughs> or Rosie you. up to green. I already have Butters and Sarong. Well, at least you got those two big boys. I had to get Butters in this week. It's tough not owning either of them. Oh, LDU's got to go. <laughs> the poor bugger. I mean, he's CBA sharing with Powell and Wardlaw, and he's just not hes just not cashing in from it, DR. If you can get LDU to green, I'd advocate that for sure. But, yeah, that, I can't believe I'd power not I had LDU in my team basically all preseason until the eleventh hour. Same. So yeah. Hindsight's yeah. a beautiful thing at times, but I'm glad that I jumped off that ship. What do you reckon, DR? Do you would you go LDU to, to green as well? It's really it's really tough, mate, because in Supercoach seasons past, we just don't look to make these moves this early. The game's changed so much, hasn't it, man, over the past trades, mate. year or two boosts, it. trades. It's it, it really has changed the game in the way that you approach it. Probably to my detriment, mate, because if I had have played the game like I usually would, I'd probably still have Nick Martin in my side and wouldn't have got Hogan in. So it's probably been a bit of a disadvantage to me, although you obviously make your own decisions, mate. But yeah. look, I've still got faith that LDU can come good. I've got faith that Rosie can come good. But we are talking More about Tom Green here, man. who... Is, is a different beast, mate, and he's already had his buy. So Tom Green without mm. the buy, it's almost to the it's almost got to the point where it's like a, a Nick Dacos in your back line. You've just got to have him, and the sooner the better because he could come out of reach really, really quickly. So it's almost a good idea in a way just to go, right, I missed out on him. He's had the buy. Let's just jump on him now and tick that box so I don't have to worry about bringing him in later on the season. So, yeah, do you know what, mate? If, if you haven't gone sick with your boosts and gone too yeah. heavy trading, then I, I think that's a fine move, mate. I think that's okay. But in, in seasons past, I'd be probably advocating against it. Um, agree with that, Spills? Yeah, I do. I think that's the only – like, those guys are the only really, like, exception. LDU, Dawson – Libra in my case because they're like they're in six there are six hundred k players with incredibly high break evens and we're looking at like Sam Flanders he's like I don't even think he's a top fifteen mid he's averaging one eighteen so I mean there's just way too many mouths to feed in the super coach midfield and you can't afford to lose points on like a Wines LDU these guys who are possibly fake primos could still average one ten but it's not going to cut the mustard in in this year's format so. Agree. Yeah, you gotta go through of that trade. Um, g'day, Cutter. How are you, legend? Hey, gents. Keep up the great work. Hope Spills is putting the podcast first from now uh, on. I love I'm it. A little cut of dry dry I, I had it. A, I was well absentee, done, <laughs> absentee last week. But uh, <laughs> I was having some. I was having some leave. Some personal leave. Let's just say that. <laughs> I'm back now. I'm back. I reckon, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's all. It's all good fun, mate. But. Look, we're back. We're back to work. We're back into it. Yeah. I'm feeling. I'm feeling fresh and ready to go. Hence why I'm in the hot seat this week and not DR. But I'm doing my best as always. <laughs> Is it worth trading Howes and Jordan early? Although they both have some money to make. If you can upgrade Powell, um, Powell and Flanders, 
in your trade plans, using your boosts. Cato, I'm actually looking to do this particular trade myself. I, you, I was going to reveal it later, but you've already sort of touched on it. I'm, I am looking to get Jordan up to Flanders this week simply because there's no one else. Yeah, he's still got some made to make. His break even's not too low. So if he scores a 90, I don't. he's not going to make too much more. Maybe another like 15K give or take. We'll lower his break even for the next week. But I think in this situation, he's the only guy around that mid 300K mark in my team and something's got to give. So it is a bit early, but I think you can get a way of doing it if it's going to get your Flanders. So I'm an advocate for doing it. It's unfortunate, but it's going to help build your team. So yeah, I'm going to say yes to this one. DR, what about yourself, mate? Yeah, it's interesting with Howes, mate, because like last week, if you heard people talking about trading out Howes this week, you think it's absolutely bonkers. But the fact that he got a low 20 score in his system, super Killed unfortunate it. because that's obviously going to be included in his next two price cycles, which means he's simply going to be a slow burn. Unless he pulls out some sort of a 90 plus operation this week, yeah, it's not really looking good for his cash gen. There's certainly more meat on the bone with him, without doubt. And I think that you know, low twenties, maybe a bit of a one soft type thing because we've already had a few rounds of data where he scored pretty decently, but it's all about who you're getting into the side. And if you're looking to get Powell and Flounders in for Howes and Jordan, then I think that is good trading catter and kudos to you as well, mate, for only a, about to use your first boost. There's many I'm up teams to my third. Used two going up to their third catter. So uh, the fact you've still got, uh, you know, what every one of those currently in the bank, I think is really nice, mate. And yeah, if you haven't used one, more than okay with uh, using a boost this week, mate. So on with you, Spilsy. Although it does hurt a little bit trading out Jordan with West Coast and Howes knowing that he's got a little bit more coin, the, the two blokes getting in in Powell and Flanders will – make more money this week anyway, I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, you're going to so. cash out more with Flanders than you will with Jordan yeah. anyway. So if you can points. get it done, do it. I, 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 that's all I say. He's been good on field cover for a short term, but yeah, yeah. if you, if you can get your Flanders, then yeah, 100%. Begsy, how are you, brother? G'day, lads. Hey. Great job yet again. Looking for Wines replacements. Gee, aren't we all? I'm lucky Lucky I gave him the flick last week. Nice. Thinking Tom Green or Merritt. <laughs> Which would be... A fixture play, probably over green. Would love would love some thoughts. PS also not love and liver getting subbed either. Yeah, absolute killer, yeah, mate. Absolute, not it happy. killed yeah. my long weekend. It was a amazing long weekend. Uh, yeah, that just had it in the back of my head. I couldn't shrug it off. Very unfortunate. Yeah, He's got to go, but oh, wine's replacements, just whoever. I mean, yeah, Tom Green, Merritt. I, I think Green. If I if you don't have Tom Green and you've got Wines, I think the obvious choice would be to to jump onto the green machine because he's clearly a top three, if not top five midfielder and low break even still. Nothing to suggest that he's going to top lose. one, mate. If not top one this year, mate, he looks like he's, on, he's, on green, he's mate. unbelievable. I mean, if yeah. if the wrong and butters form isn't sustainable, merit as well. I think yeah, green easily like, even ahead of Bons and Pally at the moment. So. Like Begsy, yeah. 100%. Green's an animal, man. Like Green's an animal. Like Green's an animal. And I, I can see what Begsy's talking about going going with the fixture going with the fixture there. But as we just mentioned a couple of questions ago, Begsy, you've still got a few weeks up your sleeve, I reckon, mate, until you really need to get Zerid in. I know it's not easy just planning for another 650K type mid. And who knows what his price is going to be if he continues this, this current form. But I think with his next couple of games – you may not be looking for massive scores there. You're really looking for those massive scores in probably three weeks' time. So if you yeah. can, mate, I'd be getting green in now and then looking to to plan for Zerit. Not easy. I completely understand that, brother. But if you're looking to get one in now, I'm I'm going to say Tom Green over any other midfielder. So that's pretty much going to be my answer. I'm that big on him. And remember, he's, he's had his buy. If he didn't have the early buy, then he's – you know, starting ownership would have been You've got a lock like through the 60%. roof. It was already high. It was already so high with that buy. People rated him that it much. Thirty eight percent there, I think, with a buy. Oh, well, yeah, mate. That well, there you go. So, I, I love him as a pick, Spills, as you do, mate. We're both owners. We've both reaped the the benefits of owning him so far in twenty twenty four. So I say, come and join the club, Begsy. 
come and uh, enjoy the green machine in your own side, mate. Thanks for the question, brother. Always appreciate it, man. And you'll actually be able to watch a Giants game without cringing as well. So True, true. <laughs> Here's your boy, DR. John O'Carroll, great My member man. of your channel. Long-term member. I have to give him a shout for that one. G'day, lads. Really enjoy the podcast, even if you support the Dons. Oh, I'll take that back, Jono. You can get stuff. No, just drive by. Love well. it, Jono. Give it to him, oh. mate. I got, got, got dubs. We, yeah. He loves the drive-by. Yeah. Loves the drive-by. <laughs> it's all within good spirit. Keep up. Keep it up. The trades I'm looking at are Jordan to Flanders. Yep, kudos, mate. I'd like I'd advocate for that one. And Fife to Powell. Next week I'm looking at looking to go Grundy to Took via DPP. I'm assuming he's got Jackson the four line. If he doesn't, then probably not, but I think he does. Captains for me this week is likely butters into green steel. Interesting one with the captains. I I, I overlooked this one, but Livingstone plays very early. I, I think like very early in the fixture. So you got a VC butters, I think, and then captain like Heaney. There's nothing else really, unless you want to VC like Gorn maybe again. Why yeah. wouldn't you? Current yeah. form. But, oh, I, I, look, we, we've touched on the first one, Flanders and Jordan. I'm happy to do that. If it gets you Flanders, so be it. But if you want to hold Jordan, yep. that's fine too. But, yeah, I've got yep. no – there's no other avenue to get Flanders unless it's a sideways trade. So 100%. So – I can answer that question. DR, maybe you can answer the next one. Five to power. Is it worth it? Because I don't have five. You do. So what would you do in this situation, brother? John, if you think that power is going to be a keeper, yes, go through with it, mate. I say mm. look, five's giving you those 69, consistent 69 type scores. I think power can put at least 20 points a game on him, as well as obviously making a lot more rapid coin. Uh, I'm really big on Tom Powell. Uh, I'm big on his role. I'm big on his talent. So I actually see him as an F6 in my side for the rest of the year, Jono. If you feel the same mm -hmm. way, mate, then I think that's fine. If you think he's more of a cash flip, though, then you may potentially be able to use that trade in a better way, I think. But but all happy for that, brother. Uh, Grundy to Tuke is going to be interesting. Now, the only thing to watch out for, mate, is the fact that Shrek should be back sooner rather than later. Yeah, Dog is not a keeper. 100%. Yeah, so that's just something to consider there, mate. I love the look, love the uh, the Took in next week, but you will be paying up a little bit more for him as well. So Took won't actually present as much value, um, obviously, as what he's presented in the last couple of weeks. But mm. uh, yeah, don't mind those at all, Jono. But just uh, certainly keep up with that Shrek news, mate, because uh, that could have a bit of an effect on Dog. I hope not as an owner, though. But I'll chat with you, I'm guessing, tomorrow night, Jono. Good on you, legend. Thanks, man. Yep. Trav, how are you, legend? Love your work, guys. Thanks, mate. Appreciate the kind words. Need to find replacements for Wines and Hogan. It Wines sounds like again. another question for DR, Chill to be honest. Door, mate. <laughs> Join the club. I'm not a part of this club. I'm glad I'm not a part of this club, but this might be a DR yeah. question. I could go Wines, Jordan, Hogan, out for Sarong, Flanders, Darcy, and 20K in the bank. Gee, that's a saucy trade. I don't mind I like that one. that. I'll, yeah. Alter alternatively... Took or steal Flanders Darcy and then bank 100 plus K, I suppose, which is not bad either. Is it worth going the discounted mid option in the pocket or the pocket the extra cash for next week? Oh, oh okay. Like so it's pretty much here. Yeah. The question is so Flanders and Darcy are in both combos. So the question steel is versus Sarong. Do you go Sarong with 20K or do you go steal with? 100 to 120k you're a strong owner spills do you do you think that the difference in average is going mm. to be that much to make it worth spending the extra k on sarong do you think that maybe those those ceiling type games that could then lend to a nice vc or captaincy pushes that over the line and and would make you cough up the extra hunch there mate what, what do you what are your thoughts? Oh, look, with, with Sarong, he's scoring really well at the moment, but that big monster game will be out of his cycle soon. He will be at a friendlier price, whereas Steel, I think, he's, he's just going up at the moment. Uh, look, what, what do you think, mate, before I give a bit of a quick take at the end? Do you have a bit of a feel as a strong owner yourself? Is, is it worth it in, in your mind? Oh, look, Sarong, to me, is almost a now and never type pick because 
he's still got a break even at 111, so it can keep going up in coin. So he got a bit of attention on the weekend. They put a bit of work to him. Uh, no, it wasn't particularly a specific tag, but just a team effort from sort of Crouch to Lego and these guys running in there. Yeah, he was really quiet in the first quarter. Uh, I reckon he was on oh, 15 maybe. He ended up on 125 anyway, and that was a quiet game. So his inside game is just yeah. unbelievable. He's contested. He just does it all. It's you got to ask yourself the question, what are you going to do with the extra 100K the following week, and is Steele going to be a top eight? If you believe so, then the value is always good. If you can get your trades the following week um, to your benefit, but if you want someone that's going to sit comfortably at, at M4, worst case scenario, home hate, Caleb Sarong, geez, I can't I can't believe how good he's gone this year. I can't believe we overlooked starting him, and I'm just super yeah. grateful to have him in my team. And he's just one of those picks where, like, I think Steele is, is one you can fade because he is a bit of a pod DR. He's someone that I don't think is going to really hurt you. If he goes big overall, it's not going to cost you too much. Where Sarong... You got to get him in because his ownerships, I think it's nearly forty percent. I re- it, it's bloody getting up there. So, do you really want to sit through watching Dockers games, not owning Sarong? Where, yeah, I feel like a steal kind of. Yeah, he's a good pick, good pod, but you know, it's not going to hurt you overall. It's not. It's a. It's a bit of a point of difference one. So, yeah. Uh, less than I thought. He's twenty four percent dr. So way less than I thought. So even Sarong's a bit of a pod in a weird way. I'm a bit biased, mate. I'm going to say strong because I think he's a genuine real deal this year. I really do, but... It's fair and reasonable, like... mate. Fair and reasonable. Tough I'm... one. Do you know what? I'm actually... Ah. Well, the difference I think here is you're probably purchasing your, let's just say, what, M3, possibly M4 for the season, or your M8. Mm. I, I'm i pretty big on steel, man. I'm pretty big on steel. Is, is he already got... Does it say who... Um, it doesn't say if he's already got other particular players. Look, if you've already got, let's just say, Green, Butters, and Bont. Go for then it. I'd, I'd, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd even be prepared. If you've got three of the big dogs, I'd be prepared to go steal, mate, and just get him in now if you've got three of the big dogs. But if you're missing one of those big ceiling-type players – then I'd probably go with Sarong because I think the difference between the two players is that I'd be much more comfortable putting Sarong in my captaincy loop than what I would steal. There's just something still that doesn't give me confidence, enough confidence anyway in the pick to, to do that with steel. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's a very tough question, mate. Do you want to pay up for your M4 or, or your, your M8? Either way, I'm fine with, but I'm probably – I'll just go a little bit opposite to you there, Spills. We're probably very much 50-50, but I'm I'm going with Steel. Just, just. – Well, actually, I actually agree with you. I like Sarong as a pick more, honestly, but I think if you're looking for your, like, bang for buck, I reckon Steel for sure because, yeah, three back-to-back, back-to-back-to-back scores, 120-plus. So, got the runs on the board. Good Had enough a full for me, mate. Yeah. He, he's going to be – he's going to be a fine pick, and – that 100K could get you an upgrade. I mean, I had 127K in the bank. It helps me get Jordan and then Barry up to um, Flanders. So first of the upgrades off, off the back of some cash gen. So good. Yeah, I'll move on. Yeah. The coach, uh, how are you, buddy? What are you hey, guys bud. looking? What What are you guys looking to do with Jackson since Darcy is reportedly coming back in round five? Would you trade him after his West Coast matchup in round six? See, I. I'm holding Jackson until Gorn has his buy. So, yes, because I want that cover. And I know he's probably – he might lose 20K doing that because maybe he pulls out an 80. But, it's yeah, it's best 18, and I just want as the best cover possible. And then once that happens, he can go to an Uber Premium midfielder. So I'm going to be jumping off. But, yeah, to answer that question, yeah, I'd hold him for that West Coast matchup in round six because you're going to need that cover when Gorn – has his buy, mate. What do you reckon, Dale? Oh, yeah, I'm absolutely holding. Look, I think that the thing that we do here is that we give him at least one game with Shrek in the side, yeah, possibly a second game, just to really confirm some data and work out what's the split going to be. They're going to ease Shrek into the role again, play him a little bit more time forward. 
These are all the things that we're not really sure about yet. And it's only really guesswork, I reckon, at this stage, coaches. So I simply think that, and it's probably a boring answer here, but we just wait to see what he's looking like with Shrek in the side. I wouldn't be trading him out before seeing what he looks like with Shrek because there's still a chance mm. that he can still average well enough to to stay in our side. So that's probably the way that I'd look at it for now. Very hard to uh, make too many decisions without knowing that, mate. But great question, mate. And we'll certainly revisit this one uh, probably in a couple of weeks, buddy. But, yeah, thanks that, dude. Much appreciated. Absolutely. G'day, Roscoe. How are you? Roscoe, co co host of the Third Man Up. How are you, legend? Good I don't man. know what he's talking about here. Was it love at first sight? Dow, what's he on about? I don't know. I think you might be talking about, about uh, maybe the, the person that you were with last <laughs> week, Stills, while you uh, just left your brothers in the lurch, mate. Well, uh, I dropped a sore play podcast for the occasion. So. Ask yourself the question, mate. What do you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, very quickly, Spills. I don't know this. What team does the Mrs. Barrick for? Not too bad, mate. She's a Geelong supporter. I don't mind the Cats. I think they've, okay. they've, they've yeah. had a lot of success. I, I, I've grown on them a little bit. I like. I watch Jez's YouTube channel. I think he's a buddy. He's a pisser. Ollie Dempsey's looking like a really good player. and I, I, I just think they're... Not not a bad team. If I ever got drafted for a footy club, I wouldn't want to play for Essendon, mate. <clears throat> I want to go play for Geelong because imagine living like by the beach, like playing AFL, but you still live in the country. I mean, shit, hot. Sign me up. Oh, you're gonna. She's gonna turn you, mate. You're gonna get no turned, way. No way. Oh yeah, I'll be like hey? I'll be like thirty years old. Bombers still haven't won a final. Oh, I might have to jump ship, mate. Oh. I'm I'm gonna make make a prediction in like about. <laughs> Oh, maybe 10 weeks' time, there's going to be a Brandon, Par Brandon Parfit uh, jersey just for a bit of a pod jersey in the background there, mate, I reckon. I'm not so copping why. that. Why <laughs> Parfit? What's, what's, what's Parfit? Just got point, to do? I don't know. I don't know why Parfit actually came came to my mind. Just I was thinking Pottish, just going really out there. That but that was a little bit disrespectful, the wasn't grand, it, mate? We should at least give you number sub. five. At least a number five for, for Jezza. Jezza. Would you be happy enough with, with that? I don't mind Jezza, but... Look, that's a long way down the track. I don't think we're going to have that problem. But I appreciate the um, the question, Roscoe. Good to Good see on you, you, Roscoe. It was bloody unreal. <laughs> Rich, how are you, mate? Darcy or Dempsey, um, being that they are likely to be played on field F6 for a while. I, oh, this is a tough one. People still training Dempsey. I don't blame you. I think he's better on field cover. But because of the upgrades I've got to make around my team, I just think that ship sailed for me. Where Darcy, you can't overlook a negative 80 break even. And I think he's going to get some ruck time. So I'm currently running Darcy at F6. So just to answer it short and sweet, mate, I think Darcy, you can get away with it. But if you can afford to yeah. jump on Dempsey and you don't have many problems in your team like I do, yeah, I'd like Dempsey preferably, but I think you can't oh, go well, wrong with either. If cash isn't an option and you're looking for an on-field player, it's Dempsey by a long way, in my yeah. opinion. It's all about the caveat there that he mentioned that they're going to be playing F6 for a while. Now, we, we, we've heard your rant spills. We've got to remember that Sam Darcy, he plays for the Bulldogs, mate, and he's coached by Bevo. And he can be well, Bevoed. Anyone can yeah, get Bevoed. Well, doesn't matter who you are. Even the Bont yeah. can be Bevoed. Yeah, exactly, mate. Exactly. So that is a little bit of a concern for me. So if money's not an option, then yeah, Dempsey every day of the week and, and twice on Sundays there, Rich. And which line should you prioritise upgrading to premium, defence or mid? I think it's really team dependent, mate. Now, at the moment for me, once mm. Ollie Wines goes, I'm not looking to upgrade my midfield at this stage because I've got McKercher, Sanders and Roberts currently on field. So for me, five premium mids is enough for now because I've got those really reliable rookies to actually play on field. So personally, I'd be probably looking to get an extra defender in at the moment. I think it's always tempting to go that midfield option because they're the big boys. They're the ones who really enjoy watching play. But for me, very team dependent, mate. Depends what your structure is looking like. If you've already got five deep in your midfield and you've got those three rookies, then I'd don't think it's worth bringing another midfielder and pushing one of those guys to the bench when we've got guys like Howes and whoever else you've got pink in your defensive line. I'd much rather get those blokes off the field first, mate. So I'm actually looking to prioritise upgrading my defence 
before the midfield, but but team dependent, mate. Spills any any difference with you there, brother? No, you've nailed it pretty well. I think there's some pretty decent Uber premium midfielders that I'd love to jump on. But if you don't have a Ryan type or or if you you miss someone, I think you can Sheasel, jump on. Man. But, yeah. yeah, I think everyone have Sheasel, but I think that there's a lot of players, even a Houston. He's just been. I don't think he's gone below 105 at all. So it's just been Consistent. ultra consistent, consistent, mate. Yeah. So look, yeah, I think defense is probably the priority there. So yeah, can't really disagree with you too much there, DR. Um, PT901, I want to say PT. Um, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce Petey. that one. Hello, hello all. Has a ship sailed on Tom Powell and Dempsey? Looking at wines and billings to Darcy Dempsey. And Powell Flanders um, can do any combination, but might be more Darcy and Powell inclined on break evens alone. And Suns playing the Giants. Cheers, guys. I think oh, I don't think the ship sailed with Powell and Dempsey, but you've got one week. Like oh, once this, this week goes by, that ship's gone. But I think absolutely, mate. If you can afford gone, to do gone it. Gone with Janet. Sure. Where Janet is at the moment next week. Like it's it's nowhere near around mm. here, mate. You, you you couldn't you couldn't next week. I don't think. Let's just say, like, for, like hypothetically, if I didn't have to trade yeah. out Libba this week, I would most likely go down to Dempsey somehow. That's how much I like this pick. So if mm. I think Dempsey for sure. Powell is an interesting one because I, I think he can be a keeper forward, but he has had that massive cash grab. He was 312. Now he's 375. So, yeah, ship has sort of sailed, but... It's a funny one because you're almost paying up for him for a keeper in the forward line at this point. Maybe a buy flip. I think you can't yeah. go wrong, though. Yeah, look, oh, they're, they're both really solid players, aren't they? Look, Tom Powell, I pretty much just keep repeating myself. This is gut feel. This is your own projections. If you think he's a keeper, go for it. If not, it's a little bit more dicey. But Dempsey just looks like a real player, mate, a real player. Comes up the ground, does some really nice things. Super talented. Janeth mentioned, I think, in our first sword play potty that he averaged really well in the VFL. And he's really just continued on that great form uh, into the seniors this year. So, uh, you know, I was talking with my man, Jared Waitley, a few weeks ago as well, mate. Sure. He had him locked in the best 22 there at Fox Studios. So uh, I, I don't think it's necessarily too late, but you're leaving a pretty fine line here, mate. But, yeah, Wines and Billings out is such a popular combo, it seems, this week. Yeah. And Flanders in, in particular, is also a very popular one. And it seems like Spills, anyone that waited the week on Powell have pretty much seen enough liked what they've seen. That's been a pretty common thread throughout some of these questions with upgrades. So I yep. think that, yeah, it, it's not too late, but, yeah, you, you, you're pushing it. I think we're, we're getting as late as you can. But, yeah, cheers, Petey. Much appreciated, brother. All right, Andrew. G'day, Legends. Billings to Darcy is a lock. DR, is that a lock? Oh, I think it, I think it is. Um, and Andrew's a legend, mate, and he always gives some some good questions and a really good support. So shout out to you, mate. I think it is an absolute lock too. Who out of Windsor and Harms do I trade to bring in Tom Green? Harms, I'd say. Um, I'm gonna jump the gun on Harms here. I think yep. Windsor. He has. He's not doing much at the moment, but his job security is bloody good, and he's playing games. He's he's just been good without being great. I think he's only a few games away from bumping a, an 80. I think he's just the sort of player that can pull an 80 or 90, dare I say it, even a ton out of nowhere. I think he's got a high ceiling. We saw what he did against Colton in the in the community series. So 100% harms. I think almost in no man's land a little bit, not doing a whole lot. I think Windsor, there's plenty of meat on the bones there. So that's an easy answer. I think this is an easy one, yep. man. Billy Sadasi for sure. And then, yeah, go harms if you can get Tom Green. That would be ideal. What um, what an upgrade up. is that? How good would that feel, Spills? Like pulling that pulling that trade button out. J Harms in T Green. Is there? I a don't much know how you got the money to do that. Right? That's unreal. Now I, I love it, mate. And that is look for me. Never look back. <laughs> absolute no brainer. Like that <laughs> man. That's going to be a good feeling, mate. Just uh, yeah, keep that feeling while it lasts, mate. That's the, the great thing about Super Coach when you're able to make these upgrades. So uh, good on you, Andrew. Appreciate good it, brother. Andrew. Dylan, hey, fellas. Hope you had a solid week. Would you trade in Jackson this week, even though Darcy will be back for Port? Um, I view him as a top six forward, even with Darcy back. Or would you go a different primo that's around 620K or below? 
Already have Haney, Flanders, Houston, and Shays. Well, you're not doing too bad there because yeah. I don't have two of those four, and they are all very, very good picks. Um, oh, I'm mate, have I'm to gonna think say, about this one. What do you reckon, DR? Yeah, I'm going to say it is too late, mate. I wouldn't be trading in Dogger. Look, his break even's friendly because he's still got that monster yeah. in the system. But once that comes out, he's going to start to go down in price again. And I worry that it may even go further down the line once Shrek comes back into the side. So, oh, look, rather than trade him in now, mate, I would much rather play the safer route and actually wait to see what he looks like when Shrek comes into the side. Because obviously now you bring him in as a keeper and you still think he's got top six potential. And I absolutely agree with you there, mate. But I just think the price that you're paying now for his current average, I don't think that average is going to be sustainable. So I would be waiting, see what he looks like with Shrek, get the data, and then make more of an informed decision there. That would be my my personal advice as, as a Dogger owner myself, mate. And yet again, I view him as a potential top six forward as well with the options that we've got there at the moment. Um, a different a memo hit. around six. Sorry, mate. It's a sugar hit. I mean... That point yeah. scoring is not sustainable. I don't think he's going to have anywhere near the ruck time when Darcy comes back because Darcy can't play anywhere else. And let's say have Darcy like 50% tog, which I don't think is going to happen. I, I reckon it might be a 70-30 split because Jackson's so much better forward than Darcy is. So I think that's yeah. sort of killed it a bit. Yeah, well, I think the ship had sailed. You can't possibly jump on Jackson now. No way. Yeah, and in regards to the other primos, mate, that you've asked that are around 620K or below, the mm. stock market video is going to be out a little bit earlier this week, mate. So maybe defer to that one, brother. Yep. I have gone through over 150 players, mate, and a heap of primo options. Wow. I've got slides. Crazy over effort. For, uh, so that's primo. a big commitment. You do well with the stockies, and you cash oh, out with you as well. Holiday skills. Like... Yeah, yeah, lucky I'm on holidays, mate. I spent it most of today actually doing the the stocky, mate. But that Second should be our job, isn't it? it? It's a bit like that, mate. But hey, get taxed, passion, mate. Your bloody passion, job. But, oh, when I'm back at school, mate, those four a.m. uploads. Yeah. Oh. I, I tell you, mate, a couple of e's in the morning, those spills, and uh, everything is all good, mate. But thanks, <laughs> Neil, you're an absolute legend, and uh, yeah, one of my absolute favourites. Cheers, brother. Oh, the ladies' man spills. Here we Why, go. Yeah, he took the words out of my mouth. Here we go. Four Thoughts on trades with Dawson to steal. Dawson, what a bloody killer. Oh, mate. Ouch, Corza. Ouch. Talk about Dawson soon when he becomes 520K and we can just jump on him when he finds some form again. But that's tragic. Yeah. Dawson to steal. Barry to Darcy and Jordan to Flanders. I would like Dempsey. I'm sure if I can trade Dawson or not. I think you get rid of him, Corza. I think. Yeah, get have. rid of him. Get. I think... Those trades are fine. Dawson is still buried to Darcy and Jordan to Flanders. 100%. Oh, that's, pretty much, that's basically what I'm doing, similar, but with like a Libba sort of format. Very, very similar, though. Pretty Let's much the honest, same mate. trades. So, the way that they're playing, like some people <laughs> would see that um, Dawson to still as a downgrade. It's actually looking like an upgrade, isn't it? And you're making coin at the moment, the way they're both yeah. playing. But, but Spills, how can a bloke like one of the most elite kicks in the competition – just, just lose it. I don't know if it's that forward, that lack of forward connection. I don't know if it's look when when you say Crouch is affecting him. Yeah, maybe. But does does Matt Crouch make him kick like a butcher all of a sudden? Surely not. Like, I don't know, man. Like, oh. surely this bloke's got to come good. But you can only go off what you've seen so far. And owners are probably fed up, man. That they've seen enough. The only downside spills is you, if if you trade them now, you're already locking in like a. How much has he gone down? Like 40, 60K or something like that? I haven't I even know. monitored him, man. I haven't I don't even know for so cause's sake. But, yeah, look, Causa, I reckon with this one, mate, you almost just cut your losses here. You have to. On, mate. <laughs> like myself yeah. and Libba. I mean, on. I think yeah. Libba's still going to average yeah, yeah, yeah. like 110, but I don't think he's worth the price he's at. And there's just better options around him. So, yeah, yeah it's a simple one there, for mate. me, mate. Yeah, go through that one. Magic, on how are you, legend? Um, prioritize Darcy in or fixing a dead defender rookie to Draper Brown, um, Mass Williams, D5 and 6. That's fine. Or boosts to do both. Like The boosts are there. I'm I'm, I'm a bit different at DR. I'm a pretty radical trader. I'm going to use my third boost in a row. But, look, we still have 40 trades for the year. So, I think it, I don't think the boosts are really as valuable as they were last year. So, I don't mind it. Um, also, who to cut for Darcy, uh, Darcy Wilson. 
Is, it, who, is that way? Am I reading that right? Who to cut for Darcy? Oh, who to cut for Sam Darcy? So who to trade out? Me, that confused the shit out of me because I I just read <laughs> Darcy Wilson. Yeah, true. It makes yeah. sense. So Wilson, Clark, Harley, Sexton, or Jordan. With Jordan, I'd be banking a lot of cash for next week. I think That's nice. Holt in that scenario because it's not a priority to trade Jordan. Hold him for that West Coast matchup. I wouldn't do that yet, and he can bank the cash next week. But I like the idea of fixing a dead rook to Draper or Brown. I did it last week. I fixed Caulfield to um, pink. So when I say fix, there's I, I, a bit of grey area there because he's pink really a fix. <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, man. <laughs> what do you do? I, what it do was you like do? it was going to break the record for the biggest negative score in a game at one stage, mate. It was it was hard <laughs> watching. And it seemed like Harry McKay was, like, benefiting every time Toby Pink did something Yeah, wrong. legit. And it's like, oh, man, I don't have Pink, so that's good. But, you know, Spills, you know that I was, I was locking in that McKay move, man, a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, whenever it was. It was just burning me. Fucking Toby Pink, do something. McKay, stop doing stuff. It was just anyway, man. Yeah, a little bit of rant I could have gone on there. But, uh, oh. look, yeah, look. Draper and Brown, look, I, I think that it depends how many. This is the thing, Spills. Like, if you're using three boosts, you've you, that's almost a quarter of your trades for the season. It depends how yeah. well you're using them. I, know. I think that it's fine <laughs> um, if you're using them well. So I think that that's okay to actually use a boost to get in Darcy, one of the two rookies, because I don't know what we're going to have on the horizon here. And I think that it may be important to actually fix up one of those backline rookies with players like Hall now injuring himself and all that sort of jazz. So uh, I'm saying yes, and it's okay to use a boost. You with me there, Spilsy? Upon reflection, when I use the boost to get Caulfield to pink, I probably don't see that as fixing a dead rookie. But this week, <laughs> you lucky bastard. You got Draper and Brown. They both look great. I like Draper a bit more, a bit cheaper. Some real excitement, some real dash. We did speak about him before. So I, I like I like Draper a little bit more just just because of the price, but yeah, at least you're yeah. not grabbing a pink who like good god good job security, but mate, I don't know when his next sixty plus score is going to come. Whether he does have it in him, I don't mate, quite you, know. You, so count you your stars, mate. Up, Draper's fine. Yeah, I'm with you, mate. I'm with you. And you were trying to fix up a dead rookie, but you've literally just put a corpse in his place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, legit. I burnt a tray for the sake of it. It's literally, I may as well try. I may as well bloody sideways try a coffee or to bloody whore. Honestly, I mean, it's just oh, probably mate, like yeah, give us back in while you're at it. Why well, don't you, mate? If you get, so I you was gonna it. say that, but I didn't want to go there. So thanks for that, DR. <laughs> Actually, we've got one about Gibbs here now from from Lee. Matt it is Tom Brown. Uh, from Richmond, uh, obviously defender, a good trading for Gibkiss. Job security thoughts, please love your work, boys. I think it's actually okay with some of their injuries at the moment, mate. Tommy Brown, yeah. from memory, was an early-ish sort of a draft pick. I'm not saying top 10 type operation, but I think he was early enough from memory. So you know, he second round, I, I want to say. Yeah, yeah I, I reckon he could have been around that mark. So, yeah, yeah. I think his job security is fine, mate. He wasn't looking too good, actually, last week. I think it was about 15 odd at half time, but then managed to pull a 60 with a decent second half. So, look, in my personal opinion, mate, I think that's fine. You've got to get Gibkiss out at this stage. He's doing absolutely nothing for you. However, actually spills. However, we talked quickly about the fact that Livingston, who's the most common loophole, he's got an earlier game this week. And when do Richmond play? Richmond actually had the second last game. So depending mm. on if you want to be really shifty with a loop, mate, you could actually hold Gipkiss for this week and use him that way. But if you do want to trade him out and you've made that decision, I think Brown is a fine trading option. Spills, any difference from you, brother? No, I won't add anything to that. Yeah, he yeah, summed up pretty well. I think I think Brown will be a fine rookie. I think Richmond are in a situation where they've just got to play their, their youth and not necessarily do a rebuild, but just get a few games into these young players with some opportunity and hopefully they can bounce back soon. See, I don't awesome. mind that. This is a bloody Twitter name if I've ever heard one. Daily King right. HP laptop. <laughs> Wouldn't have any stories left on that one. But yeah, that laptop's getting a workout week in, week out. Great attention to detail. Previously, we thought we needed to make around 150K 
for cash gen. Yeah, I'd say that's around the mark. Um, with the added trades up to 40, is 100K more realistic? It, it's a great um, question. That's a, that's a good question because I, I would use Jordan as an example who hasn't even made 100, but I would say he's ready to go. But the thing is, it's not so much about the the cash gen. I think it's about the early on-field points i think his point scoring is a lot better than a base rookie and you're going to get that little cash grab and then you can cash him out for like 300 and 350k rather it's it's a it's a fair bit to play with so let's say yeah 100k is probably more realistic depends on how you go about it but yeah i, I like to wait for 150 i think there'll be a, a bit of an average i think dempsey's going to make 200 250k at least alongside mccurcher but yeah there will be players like wilson um, like these, like um, like house types that struggle to make a hundred. So I think one hundred and fifty k is probably the average, mate. So yeah, what do you reckon? Yeah, you look, I certainly agree that the value of a trade's gone down. But mm. let, let's just say, for example, if last year we were still going with the one hundred and fifty, is the question I'd, I'd throw back is an extra four trades taking fifty k off what each trade is worth probably not i reckon that's just too much of a gap four extra trades we're going all the way down from 150 to 100 so i wouldn't go that far mate i'd, I'd certainly be be lowering that 150 expectation you could be going to your 120 mark i think i'd be a little bit more comfortable with but at the end of the yeah. day there's really no rules you've got those blokes that you know are going to be slow burns that you think to yourself well maybe if i keep on to him for another four weeks i could squeeze out an extra 40 50k but if I do jump early, I could get in a bloke who's going to make that much in, in a week. So a little bit team dependent on, you know, depending on what situation you're in. But it's a really nice, nice question, mate. I would be saying I value it at 120 to 130. Personally. Yeah, but I was going to say that, DR. Something around the middle, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sit around the middle. Yeah. Nice one, though, mate. And that elite name as well there, Kingy. Well done, that's, that's great work. I'm a massive fan of that one. Jacob Harris, how are you, buddy? Surely Dawson has to go this week. If not, buddy, last week, he's been a killer. He's he's ruined his cash gen. Um, DR absolutely killed me so far, rightly so. Would it be silly to go up to Tom Green? Can't watch no. GWS games otherwise. <laughs> it's bloody hard, isn't it? We'll be holding Dawson, upgrading around him. you got to get rid of Dawson. I don't know what he's priced at at the moment, but he's got to go. I think he's, he's scoring. He's, he's It's just shut the bed in every single area we talk about his disposal efficiency which is his his real strength in his game from last year which is almost non-existent this year Just left him but, left him so he's he's 590k dr with a break even of hang on a second 174 and he's projected to lose 35k you got to get rid of him 100 percent if you Show if you have enough money to get up to tom green you might have to go a dead rookie down or a darcy or something like that but if you can get that done and get tom green you can rest easy watching the giants play because it's bloody beautiful when you know you've got tom green each side and dawson's got to go um we spoke about picking yep. him up for buddy 450k probably not that yeah, cheap but it's looking that way. way yes jacob 100 yeah, percent. get rid of him easy uh, and look in saying this, guys, anyone that's watching, be prepared for Dawson to just come out with a nice 130 next week. But all we can go off is the Still data that we've got so far. We know he's a talented player. We are going to see some really nice games. I'm sure he's going to hit form again. But there's just too many question marks at the moment. And for me, there are zero question marks on Tom Green. I'd call him a must-have. So good on you, Jacob. Enjoy jumping on the green machine, my man. Q Long. Flanders or Turk Miller are better in this week. This is an easy one, mate. Flanders for sure, because he's that num he's not number one or two forward. You got to get him in. Like I, ha I haven't even assessed Tuuk Miller. I haven't thought about him. All I've thought about is getting Flanders in because, yeah, he's a, he's going to be a godsend in that forward line. And then the ownership, you just don't yep. want to anti, anti pod him. I think Tuuk Miller is one of those guys like Steele. He's a great pod, but if it means missing out on someone that's a must have in a in a particular line, like Flanders in the forward line, yeah, you're going to lose out big time there. So. Yeah, definitely. You, you nailed it, man. You nailed it. And just can I give a shout out to Q Long? Flanders yep. or Tuk, do you notice the little TM symbol there? The trademark yeah. symbol is just added in in bold. That's oh. elite Q Long. So I didn't even notice that, DR, but of course you would. Is your bloody love child? 
Oh, absolutely, mate. You, you've, got to, you've got to respect oh, mate, a little yeah. mini shout out like that, mate. Going with the uh, trademark nickname. So good on you, oh, Q. Like He's it. got another one here, Spilsy. Already set on shifting Gipkus and Wines to Darcy and Flanders. Beautiful. Would you recommend a boost to go either Billings to – oh, look at these, mate. Billings to Whitfield or Jordan to Sheasel. Absolutely, yes. man. Like, get, get, do it now. Oh, what are you waiting for? Like, Why are you watching the podcast? Do you trade now? 100 percent, mate. <laughs> lock lock either one of those in. I like Sheasel much more than Whitfield, but I like Jordan much more than Billings for this week. So either one of those, Q, lock it. Lock in, it in mate. and bloody throw away those keys, mate, in the ocean. Because you know 100 percent Good on you, Q. Appreciate it, brother. Jesse Carter, would you trade Al to you, Tom Graham for boost? I think we had this question before, DR. Absolutely. If you have oh, you just got to do it. I would you similar to Dawson. Yeah, he's potential to bounce back, but it's like young, mate. I mean, yes, young bounce back. We we knew he, he had it in him, but it's it's a bit of a stock market. You gotta cash him in while he's still expensive when you're gonna lose a lot of money. There's too much to be gained elsewhere. So Jesse That's Boy, it. absolutely massive yes, mate. Um, yeah, I would yeah. definitely and, and just very quickly, Spills. The thing is, mate, whenever we're trading out um your know, so-called premium midfielder, you've got to be prepared for these blokes. To put up some massive scores from time to time. That's you super great, mate. Yeah. That's just a risk you take. But exactly it, right. It's it's doesn't timing, outweigh the it's risk of them timing. like going shit again the next week. So like, what if you did hold Hayden Young and then he scored another sixty? Like you'd be bloody that's rooted. The thing, man. You don't that's know. Yeah. It's yeah. not worth the risk, but absolutely. I love this name as well, Spilsy. That's a there's probably some elite some elite names on his Twitter. Isn't there, we, isn't ma- there? Maybe need to step out step up our game. <laughs> oh, watermelon cruiser should i prioritize a triple upgrade of wines jordan billings to green took steel and flanders or fade two of them to trade caulfield to a premium defender and fixed structure currently dacos she's yo mass williams house caulfield reed um plus bring in darcy look oh Caulfield. I'd be up structure man i'd be fixing I'd, up structure yeah. caulfield's got to go if you could jump on Draper for Caulfield and just correct that one, at least you don't have to do what I did and grab pink because that was an absolute shamble. But I think Draper's a lot better. So 100%, if you can fix up your structure and then work around the team, like then prioritize these these premiums. But you got to take into account that Dacos has got a buy coming up very soon. I don't think it's next week. I think it's the following week. Uh, Collingwood and Sydney have it, so... Who's yeah. coming on at D six? I know it's best eighteen, but like every point counts, and yeah, you got you're gonna have and you need cash gen as well. So it's yeah. unfortunate. I didn't want to do it myself. I didn't want to use a boost to get pink, but I did. Whether it was the right call or not, I probably not to be honest. But the principle was right. I needed to fix up that rookie slot. So um, I think 100%. at the end of the day, mate, if you've got the opportunity early on to fix up your yeah. structure, then that probably yeah. takes precedent. For, for, for me, sure. but uh, good on your watermelon cruiser. Love you uh, much more than uh, LDU this week, mate. <laughs> that was terrible, wasn't it? Spills just went oh, with that, mate. Oh, I wasn't even gonna say anything. Gonna move out, <laughs> Next question, <laughs> Will. How are you, mate? Hope you're traveling well. Hey, lads, question about my trades. There's addition to everybody else that's tuning in. What do we do with our trades? It's bloody shambles at the moment. Billings to Darcy is locked in for me. Love that. Yep. Just on yep. the other trade, I'm struggling with. I have a few options. Jordan to Steele, Jordan to Whitfield via Dacos DPP. Grundy to Gorn um, or Hall. Or, or if the Hall bad news, um, Hall to Tom Brown. I would Hall probably say the first one, mate. I really like Jack Steele. Um, I think. Whitfield's not a bad pick, but I like Jack Steele a lot more in that slot in the midfield. I think he's prime for a definite, and the durability is a bit better. I know I had a pretty shit year last year, but I think he's a proven, proven premium. He's got the runs on the board. I like Steele a lot better. Um, and Grundy to Gorn, oh, it's a it's tough one. Grundy's yeah. got so Grundy's got a break even. I think it's ninety dr. I don't know specifically what it is it's definitely a double digit and he's got west coast so could be a worse week to trade grundy oh. this is a worse week to trade him that's that's the trouble but it's the worst week to fade gone as well this is a real this is a really tricky one i know um i still think the first one but just 
Oh, it's tough. It's really tough, man. It is. Oh, well, all right. So I like Jordan to steal better than Jordan to Whitfield. So if you're looking at those two, I'd probably cross out Jordan to Whitfield. What buddy? Um, Hall to Tom Brown. It depends on what your other rookies are like, mate. So if, yeah. if you're if Hall's the only bloke that you've really got issues with, I think it's okay loop, just to hold him, loop him for now. For now. Um, yeah, even use him as a loop. So that is, I'd need to actually see a team to answer that one. Will maybe so, we'll match it. Uh, might might uh, be a bit of a chat. Yeah, chuck us one through, Will, but. Oh, I'll, I'll, oh it's, I'd, I'd, I'd say Grundy to go on every day of the week, but Grundy's playing West Coast. West Coast this week. And Gorn's got Roberto, who has a pretty good record on him. So, But, look, but Gorn's a must have as well, isn't he? Like, none of these I other blokes are walking is a must have. Gorn is a must have. So, look, Grundy's got to go regardless. If you can cop missing out on a little bit more cash, like you probably miss about 20 or 30K from Grundy. If you can get away with that, then yeah, I'd say Gorn. Gorn will, Gorn will make as much as Grundy this week, probably that yeah. way anyway. Yeah, Do you know I, I, what? I'm going to say Gorn, I think, mate. Yeah, I'm switching too. I'm going uh, Grundy to Gorn. As much as it, it kills me to have to yeah, recommend yeah. trading out Grundy this week, um, you've just got to have him, don't you, Spills? You've got to have him and then uh, do what the uh, experts do and get him as your VC, mate, for a big uh, <laughs> stealing game. No legend that did that this week, uh, little birdie <laughs> told me anyway. Sounds like a ripper bloke. <laughs> great bloke, yeah, great bloke. Great rig too. Simon, uh, Dawson to Miller or Steele, um, or keep the faith. Don't keep the faith. Give him the sack. He's got to go really quick on this one. I think we've covered it really well here, DR. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying yeah. Steele. We went into it earlier on the podcast. So, yeah, take yeah. that advice, mate. If That's it, Simo. Um, appreciate the question, brother. Um, I think we've, we've pretty much answered this on, on a few occasions now. So, yeah, we're both uh, Steele, mate. But either way... Jeez, you can't go wrong. You get the best two-way running mid in the comp in Miller and be a very, very happy man, I think, mate. But thanks for that, buddy. Yeah. Jeez, Spills, we're getting uh, we're getting closer. And I reckon I've just got 19 notifications here. We just got a buddy. Question. So I might even have to do a separate q and I reckon, mate, because uh, what's the time yet? Jeez, we're getting we got, it's 11. It's an hour, and, hour and a half, so we'll keep smashing through it. We'll be really quick. We're I think we've an hour, we? Too. But uh, oh, you know what we're like, mate. All right, let's smash through them, brother. Let's smash through them. Matty. Matt, is Sam Darcy a must-have? Um, no, he's got a great break-even. There's that lob factor as well who played good in the VFL. Um, don't want to get bevoed again. Look, there's always that possibility, but the negative 80 break-even isn't worth that risk. So you don't want to miss – you don't want another Dempsey. Like, you don't want to miss that ship that's really yeah. rare in the forward line and it could sail away. So, yeah, I think Darcy's a must-have, even though he's just scored a 59 – Getting a bit of ruck split as well. I think you can bounce back and be a nice F6. Fieldable option as well. I'm happy to have him at F6 every day of the week. So what do you reckon, yep. DR? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty much with you there, mate. And I think that Matt's almost answered his question here because he's already raised the red flags. You've got Lob and Bevo, which are the two red flags with this pick. So, again, bit of gut feel, mate. How There's much risk attached to everything. But I, I don't think... I think it's more risky fading Darcy. If Darcy comes out and scores another really good, like another 80 or something, like you're screwed. So, yeah. It's a good point, Spills. Yep. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah. We're, we're agreeing. Must have there, I think, mate. Uh, Logan Jennings, would you rather green and a rookie on field, in brackets, Howes, Rip? Look, I've got Howes on field as well. Here's where it is. Or yeah. Whitfield and Jordan on field. I think Whit and a rookie. Um, like JJ over Howes will help this week with 22 um, and structure overall. Yeah, I think Whitfield and Jordan for total points. I mean, it's it's going to be a hard one missing out on Green. But me personally, I think Howes is an absolute burn man at D6. He can respond. I'm re reluctant that he can. I'm, I'm forced to field him at D6, unfortunately. There's nothing I can do about it. But if you have a say, then... Yeah, I don't mind Whitfield. What do you reckon, DR? It's, you're going to bleed well, on what's green. Well, I'm looking at the averages here, mate. So we, even even including that 26, House's average is 62.3. Jordan's is 79.5. So around that to 80. So you're getting mm. about 18 points more from Jordan. I'd, I'd say that Green would pop more than 18 points on Whitfield, to be honest. So... 
Oh, it depends. Do, do you think that was just an outlier that that Howes game because he's pumped out a ninety already? Yeah, he's we've he's got a couple of really good scores, worst, haven't we? Well, yeah, Green is. Oh, he's basically almost a must have, and he's he's going to be hard to fade now. So, oh, oh, that's I'm finding that very tough. I'm. Do you know what? Given the fact Jordan is playing West Coast this week. Yeah, let's say that. Let's say Jordan. I mean that way this week. Yep, yep. Cheers, yep, Logan. That, that's, a, that's a tough one, though, man. Yeah, it is. Mitch, how are you, man? Uh, is is short a trade? Uh, could keep one more round as they do have the Saints, yet we'll still go down in price. So this is an interesting one. Now, the problem I have with trading Jane Shaw is he's sub 500K. He's 493K now, I'm pretty sure. So where are you going with that? You're going to have to cough up money elsewhere. You might like if you've held him this far. Yeah, it hurts, but the Saints, mate, he's gonna he's turning up for sure. And if he doesn't, I do sincerely apologize. But there's nothing to suggest based off current form of defenders against them. They do not care about opposition defenders. I think this would be the week where Short can clean up his average a little bit. Hopefully he can get that break even a bit lower and then go up to maybe yeah, sort of low to mid five hundred Ks and then if you're in a nice situation with the 40 trades, maybe you can look to jump on a, hopefully Dan Houston pops out a, a pretty ordinary score and he's on the bubble. But I don't think there's no avenue. It's it's a dead price. You just got to hold the faith. I mean, short's better oh. than a rookie. So it's a tough one. I think DR might beg to differ here, but I don't know. What do you do? Like, where's the... You're going to have to find some extra money somewhere to go up because who are you going up to? I think every single top six defender at the moment is hovering around, I want to say 580K minimum. So you're going to have to find almost 100K somewhere to get it done. Unless you're going down or Massimo, you might have missed. I think he's already, his ship sailed. I reckon that's they go sailed. all the way down to a Draper. DR, what are you doing in this situation, mate? Oh, it's so tough because it, the answer for me, mate, even though you've got to pay up an extra 80-odd K, is such a usually an easy one. Just get out of the pick. Similar to Dawson, it, the, the the data's there to suggest he's a failed pre-may pick. A lot has to change for him to improve. Like, he punched out a 60-odd last week, man. Like It's just not up to scratch Terrible, for me. No. The issue is we look at what what your boy did, and these are the defenders last week. I'm pretty sure that, like, five out of your seven – this is Essendon – five out of their top seven scorers last week were defenders. Like, everyone just Ooh. went – nuts and you saw what nick martin did wouldn't you hate trading out Jaden short this week out of all weeks and he actually goes close to that 150 odd break even against the saints if there's one team that are probably going to allow him allow him to do it it's ross and, and any saints so uh I'd, I'd still almost be tempted just to get out of dodgeville with this pick because i just don't see him anywhere near being a top yeah. averaging defender but if you feel lucky and you think that that run's going to continue for defenders against the Saints, then maybe keep the faith just for one more week. It's a bit like a gamble, man. It's a gamble. It is a gamble. And massive what gamble. I will say really quickly is if I had to give any sort of advice, I would hold just because of the matchup. That if he played anyone else, I think you definitely trade. Now, going up is almost impossible, I reckon, unless you do have a bit of money stashed, then, then great. But... I'd almost be tempted to go the other way and go go short down to a draper. It depends what your cover's like down back. And then if you can make it moves elsewhere, that's a big gamble doing that because you lose a bit of depth. But mm. if it's gonna help you upgrade something elsewhere, like maybe you can turn a maybe you can turn a, a Jordan into a into a green or a butters or a sarong or something like that. If if you can do that and you still got some depth and you haven't battled with so much carnage and defense and maybe you don't have a, a whore or a, um, or a house or someone that can cover. It's a really tricky question, but if it was me, just because he's already lost the money, you may as well just hold him. I mean, I would have traded him two weeks ago. I was seeing him round that's, one and gone, hell no. Yeah, that's probably I, the key. Got to yeah. hold, I, I don't know if you completely agree with me that day, but I think you got to hold him because it's just – He's in no man's land. You just got to back him in to score well, and hopefully he can go up a little bit, and then maybe the trade's worth it. it maybe he can be the DR Jordan Ridley from 2023 and just be a really nice D7. 
I mean, could be, could be. Yeah, it's a tough it, one. It's gut feel, man. As I said, it's it's a gamble. Red or black, keep him or or sell him. This is a week that he's probably going to get one of his biggest scores for the year. Yeah. Uh, how lucky do you feel? That's the uh, that's probably the question for this. How lucky do you feel, Mitch? But whatever you do, all the best of luck, brother. All the best of luck. I think last one here, Dr. Until you, I think, are you going to answer the more replies in a different? We've got. Uh, we'll do Q&A. these last three here, and then uh, I'm pretty sure these other twenty notifications and maybe a few more questions here. I might even just do a quick Q and A, mate. Start off right. with answering these questions tomorrow at some stage when I get back from the basketball, and um, and do it that way. I might even do a live Q and A tomorrow night. I'll lock that one in. Yep. So I will answer the questions I didn't get to here first of all, and then for anyone else that wants to jump on, maybe for we'll say half an hour to an hour, I'll do that for the community tomorrow, mate. Just to make sure we get to all these questions because I hate the fact that we, if we miss out on any, but we've only got a certain amount of time, mate. We're an hour forty. This is meant to be like fifty minutes. We said. Yeah, it's a t- it's, it's basically so, uh, been a Q and A potty. It, it is over eleven o'clock, like you know, Australian Eastern Standard Times over here. So look, we'll smash through it. Um, yeah, I like that idea, mate. We'll finish on um, I want to say a dogs o nine or a dogs. We'll, we'll, how about how about we finish on Danny here, mate? So go a dogs, the angry Chihuahua, and then Danny, yep. and then we'll we'll uh, call. Yeah, him okay, yeah, that that's fair. Yeah, because I, I think I've been brought up in in a. In one of these questions, anyway. So yeah, it makes next tail sense. All right. Do you think using a third boost already is already too soon? We'll you get me that. Jordan to Miller. I'm using my third boost, mate. So it. no, <laughs> we've got heaps of trades. Send it if it if it means fixing up your team, get it right. If it's going to get your premium, so bear. If you want Miller, you think Jordan's going to do that? Uh, I don't see why not. If you don't have steel, though, I would rather steel over Miller, as discussed before. But if you really like yes. Miller, yeah, I don't see a problem with it. Yeah, I don't think um, there's anything wrong with that. Uh, nah. Just make sure you're using them right. And uh, keep in mind as well that you pretty much – that would have mean that would mean that you've used pretty much a quarter of your trades for the season. But Spills is doing it. So, uh, yeah, live, live a little bit dangerously, maybe, eh, dogs? Cheers, brother. Yep. Next one. I think I'm probably going to absolutely butcher this one. So I'll read out the tag. Um, the the sort machine, I want to the say. Angry Chihuahua, mate. Chihuahua. Chihuahua. Is that how you spell Chihuahua? See, I'm, yeah, it's I've an interesting the, spelling. I'm, I'm yeah, not, not easy. super coach, but any sort of English comprehension, forget it, mate. You're the teacher yeah. here, not me. So this is where you come in, Andy. You got other skills, mate. You got your rig and all these other things. <laughs> You're all good, mate. All right, I'll cop that one. <laughs> Hello, all. First time posting. Welcome to the discussion, mate. Good to have you. Cheers, man. Um, absolutely love your videos. Yeah, we appreciate it. We get a lot of kind feedback, which is nice. Your thoughts on boosting Dawson, Jordan, and Howes for Steel. Darcy and Whitfield can't decide on Steel versus Took um, versus Sarong. Just to Cheers, get everyone. a tag occasionally. We've discussed this as well multiple times. I'm going steel over two for sure. Same. And yep. I don't think it's bad if you use a boost to get that done. Can't really go wrong with that one. Strong's a bit of a cough up, but we did have a conversation about that earlier on in, uh, earlier on in the Q and A. Um, I don't think Took necessarily gets the tag. I think, I mean, I think Anderson's probably their most damaging where Rao's probably more contested. I don't think you have to worry about that, but at least with steel, as we, as we said, DR, he's a number one mid where Took's probably, second or third fiddle so yeah and and i think the other thing you may be alluding to here does took ever actually get a tag job so does took actually do any tagging oh okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, i may yeah. be reading it wrong i'm not too sure but i, no, I don't I think you're right there too yeah, much of that yep and I don't think you'll tag even when he know. has spills he seems to just tackle that much that that just builds still up his scores. floor anyway and still finds enough of the pill we know he's the hardest two-way runner in the comp so that's the difference between a took and, and another type of tagger if he ever gets a, a job is that yep. he works that hard he'll find enough of the ball already and just tackle like a beast so now nah, i would not be concerned with that uh angry chihuahua but thanks for that brother and uh, we'll finish off with daniel Danny perry Roy. still hit the way mate Danny boy, how are you, mate? Hey, guys. Um, welcome back to Spills. Thanks, mate. Good to be back. I, I missed the podcast. I missed 
I miss DR and Janeth. I still miss Janeth a fair bit. It's good to be back and, um, yeah, really enjoying it. I don't think I'll miss another episode because it's just not it's just not worth copping the flack, is it? Yeah, just, you'll cop it, mate. I was so, never getting away yeah. with that. I, I thought I might, but, yeah, watching over it, yeah, it wasn't great. So probably never again unless I'm cooked. Um, who to trade in this week? Um, who to trade this week? Wilson or Reed? I don't know. Wilson... I would say like Wilson because I, I I think Reed's still got plenty of meat on the bones. As I said earlier, but Wilson's it. Wilson's priced in no man's land. Dr. What are you doing with Wilson? One, I think he's one sixty k. If that, what? I'm having a look here, mate. So you've got Wilson one hundred sixty five thousand two hundred with a break even of eleven. None you've of got them. Harley Reed two hundred forty two k with a break even of twenty two. It depends mm. if you need a little bit more cash in the bank. I suppose. Well, you do, you have a, do you have a Sam Berry? Do you have a Lazaro? I mean, yeah. I'd be the going issue, though. The issue is, Spills, with someone like a, a Wilson selection, is the fact that he's now going to have that really low score in his cycle for the next couple of weeks, which means he's like yeah. going to be extreme slow burn. But in saying that, you know, 52 in Reed system isn't anything to really write home about. So I think Reed oh. can come good quickly. I think like and he's only made 40k. I mean, he needs some time this one. It's not worth the trade. I'd like to oh. hold both ideally. I, I would I would like hold to trade both. any ideally, but if you have to. I'd be trading oh. other rookies before those two. I think they've still got plenty of upside, whether like even a Windsor, I did say he's got some good games in him still to come. But I, I, I don't know. I would get rid of Windsor before I get rid of like Wilson or Reed. Like well, look how good Wilson was in the preseason. I mean, only needs yeah. a sniff, just one good game over eighty, and like we're back, baby. But just hasn't. It's been a tough few matchups. Like not the best venues, some pretty difficult matchups. So the Dons had a lot of the ball, like very midfield defensive orientated game and not really beneficial to wingers. So, mm. don't you, mate? I, I'd probably not the answer you're after, but I'd be holding fire on both of them. But if there's other rookies that need to go, do do what you got to do with those two. I just don't think it's worth a trade, really. And I agree with you, Spills. Yeah, I agree with you. Look, if I think if any, I'm, I'm maybe read just because you're going to make more cash there. But, yeah, ideally, mate, I think you yep. keep both, Danny. But uh, Spilsy, we're going to leave the mailbag there, mate, because we're almost two hours in. Uh, yep. Thank you very Fair much time, to mate. all the legends that have left questions. I've got a feeling, Spills, are about 36 when we actually started this. Looking at those notifications there, mate, I reckon we we're going to have to pull something out of the trick bag because we've got all these other segments to come back. We've got Janeth to come back. And, like, I don't even think this week is really that relevant. It's mostly, like... Flanders, Green, Jordan. There's like Troops a few players. Steel, Darcy, Wise, that's pretty much Dempsey. It's what? been the theme of it's the week. It's been the same it? amigos every single time. Yeah. So what's it going to be like when it's oh, halfway through the season and people really upgrading? I mean, we're going to have like 50 questions at least and then all of our segments, it's going to be bloody impossible. So I don't know how we're going to manage it. We'll work something out. but We'll work something out. I might even, um, any ones we can't get to, I'll try to commit to do a live. I might even get just a special guest on each week for a bit of a live for the ones that we can't get to. But, yep. yeah, and appreciate the support, Spills. Really appreciate the support. Very humbling as well. So oh, It's been, it's been so good. This is, this is unreal. Like you talk about breakouts and footy, I think, in terms of the super coach po- super coach podcasting platform, this has definitely been a breakout. Like last year, our most viewed podcast was I think it was one point nine k over the buys, and this year we've trumped it both times. I think you and Janeth got two point five k last week, and then I think he's matched. We I think we we all matched it in the first review. So not sure how many this one's going to get, but yeah, the the viewership's been unbelievable. The feedback's been awesome i haven't heard a single bad thing about this podcast so yeah it's great we're always up for advice and and criticism but there hasn't seemed to be much of it at all and it's been really nice um nice gesture for supercoach and it's definitely something i enjoy doing on a Absolutely. tuesday night mate but um look we'll wrap it up it's um yeah it's almost bedtime for myself mate buddy i've got to get to bed it's getting late mate but particularly when you work full time you're a bit lucky you get to sort of kick back and have a 
have a bit of a sleep in for your school holidays, mate. Kudos to you. Cannot complain, mate. Cannot go actually go into the. Uh... Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Go into the NBA exhibition tomorrow, actually, with uh, with yeah, the boys. Yeah. That should be a little bit of fun, mate. But uh, yeah, tell you what, and another epic podcast, mate. The the mailbag really took over this week. Definitely. Uh, maybe we need to put like a timer on for each question or something. We'll work it out. But uh, either way, Spilsy, great to see you back on the podcast this week. In all seriousness, it just was not the same without you. Just not, just like it's not the same without our brother, the Professor Janet. But I'm sure he's actually in a deep sleep at the moment, Spills. I could just see him peacefully sleeping there in a comfortable hotel bedroom, uh, just uh, enjoying the, the sounds and the sights of uh, – I think he's in England at the moment. So yeah, uh, I think he is. Enjoying it. He'd be happy to cop that. He, he hasn't copped it anywhere near as bad as I have for my absence, but I guess his reason was a little bit more. We had this plan for a while. Uh, mine was sort of like a last minute sort of like, oh, we we're going to dinner type thing. And it was like, oh, it was the 21st. So it was like a now or never. I thought, like, nah, I've got to do this for sure. I want to meet the family. And <laughs> they're all really lovely people. And yeah, as much as I did miss coming onto the saw play potty, I definitely don't regret my decision, mate. Cause, um, yeah, she's a great chick. So, yeah, hopefully it goes well. Um, mate, before we go, we've got to touch on our captains quickly. What are you doing for captains? Oh. So, what I'm going to what I'm gonna do is because of the Livingstone early matchup between the Swannies, I don't have any choice. I think I'm going to VC Butters, who I'm bringing in this week, and then I'm going to captain probably Haney against West Coast. Hard to pass that one up. What about yourself? I'll be absolutely following suit, mate. The only the only decision I've got is do I go Gorn against Rob? But I probably think that with the matchup there, Butters against the Essendon midfield, I'm a little bit more comfortable there. So yeah, I would be absolutely with you, man. Um, it's it's hard not to have Tom Green in your combo, but mm. I look ideally I'd love to even go something like a Heaney into a Green, but I don't have the loops to be able to do that this There's week, unfortunately. No. So yeah, uh, I'm I'm with you, mate. I'll be going most likely Butters into our man Heaney. So Isaac, I've knighted him actually, mate. In the stocky, you, you'll see this. I've knighted him now, Sir Isaac Heaney, after oh, his great performance. Right, Remember, so. First potty, mate. I said, lock this bloke in for the brown low. Lock him in for a top 10 midfield average overall. I thought it might have been going a little bit early after just the one week, but I think that uh, I may be on track for a bit of a decent big call there, Spilsy. So uh, shout out to Isaac, a great man. You know how at the start of a game, players will shake hands? I reckon on Saturday, I reckon Isaac will go up to his opponent and be like, kiss my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Love your handshake. It'll be kiss my shoes or bow. Has to, has to be respected. Isn't Yeah. I'll tell you what. Thinking about that, mate, I wonder, right, I'm sure he wouldn't do this. He's a professional. But you know our man, Kammer, big fan of the podcast. Yeah, Anthony I watched Kammer. him on the weekend. Now, he kicked it. Ripping goal as well. I think it was like a a Martin Left turnover or something or a Fisher. Who they play? It was either Martin or Fisher, one of those two blokes, turnover, and he snapped a lovely goal. But I wonder if he's like playing on like a Tom Stewart and he's got Stewart as a VC, he thinks to himself, <laughs> oh, <what?" laughs> I want to ask him that actually. We've got to get him on because he's in our cash league. He's a massive super coach. Do you keep him quiet? Do you have Spills. a little bit of a games. hush hush with Ross the boss? And you go, look, look. Games, games on the line here, Spills, right? Cameron's got the ball and he's in a big cash league here, a big he's cash league. Cash and he knows that he's maybe three points down. He sees Tommy Stewart there and Stewart he sees the big sticks. He's got two two options here, Spills. Do I go for the big sticks? Do I make a contest do I, or do I let him mark it? Yeah, maybe if just a marks little bit. I'll win the cash uh, league. Off to Stewie there. We'll see. Yeah. Oh, Depends how much he loves to coach. <laughs> such a good question. That really, I've got to hear his, his feedback on that because that's that's going to keep me up tonight, mate. I don't know what to say on that one. Look, mate, bloody great podcast we did. We won't keep these bloody lovely viewers up any later um, than we are at the moment, even though they're going to get to watch it during broad daylight. But for us, we've got to call it a night. It's time to go to bed. Quarter past 11. It's all over. So, um, yeah, mate, it was an absolute pleasure to be in the hot seat. Uh, probably rotate it back to you, great man, next week. We'll see how we go, but something different. It's always good rotating around. I know the, the Fancy Take TV boys do it a lot. They always take turns hosting regardless whether it, you know it's on George's channel. So I like that. I think it's a great gesture. It keeps us all involved, but um, 
yeah, had um had a good potty, mate. Definitely enjoyed this one. It's gonna be great having Janeth back next week. Just isn't the same without him. But um, yeah, that's just about it from us. Um, hope your team's doing well. Hope you're enjoying the potty. Let us know what you reckon. Um, give us a like on Spotify for our lovely Spotify listeners as well. And um, yeah, look after yourselves. Take it easy. And um, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next pod. Good on you, Spilsy. Catch you guys.